And here comes your boy, the Ice Lord. Hello. Good evening. Hey, man. Here I am. Here I am. Here Rock I am. Rock you like a hurricane. <laughs> oh, yeah. Come on, Bones. Sing it. Sing it. Good evening. Give Good us a scorpions. Yeah. That's all I know. Bones rules. He, you're a you're a gifted rapper, man. I gotta say, I love it. Good stuff. Welcome Good to the to ninth bones. circle. Mm -mm. Oh, is he here? Yeah. Well, I gotta check them comments. Damn, Anthony, what's up? Shabow. How are you doing, buddy? Good to see you. This might be a very chill stream this evening because we're trying to pay tribute to one of our fallen favorites, or one of mine at least, uh, Lane Staley. I believe that his uh, official date of passing was in 2002, April 5th, 2002. So this is the 22nd year from his exact, uh, at least the official public date of his yeah. passing. Usually the family doesn't, you know, even doesn't, you know, tends to keep it like private. Sometimes sure. I would uh, keep it up with like a week. I think it would be up to like a month before they go public with it. Give that family, oh, yeah. uh, you need to give the family some alone time so they can do the, the thing, you know, grieve and in privacy, which I think is respectable, you know. Sure. The, the Dylan family will, you know, will deal with a lot and they don't want a bunch of people like, you know, bombarding them, especially with like, you know, like look, look at Kurt Cobain. Yeah. All those conspiracy stuff. Oh boy. They don't want like something like that happening. Yeah. Family doesn't. Some of the stories I've heard yeah. of that are just crazy. And with Lane in particular, he was kind of hidden in his what is the condo that he had, and he was just abusing heroin and playing video games. I guess. Well, the, the thing about Seattle, Seattle had such its own sound. Mm -hmm. uh, and I was in the I was living in Virginia in the early '90s when like Nirvana hit the scene. Mm -hmm. You go see how you got Nirvana, you got Pearl Jam, um, I Soundgarden. I, Soundgarden, um, Queensryche is Bellevue, though. I, I want to say, yeah, the, um, the, Mother Love Bone, you know, Mother Love Bone. Yeah, Andrew or, um, Wood. If you haven't heard, you know, the stuff, dude, absolutely awesome. The song Wood, which is off, um, what album is that? Dirt. That's basically, I guess, it's supposed to be like a kind of dedicated or whatever about Andrew Wood. Even though okay. it's his W O O D, not W O U L D. I just love the breakdown or coda in that song, the very end, you know, just gets so emotional. A friend of mine was saying, and this kind of ties into my own personal story, but uh, she saw him live and she was tripping on LSD and she just totally fell apart when they played that part, you know, at the end, where it's just, what's up, Hobbs? See, I didn't know. I didn't know about Mother Love Bone. I think I might have heard them, and then like my older mm -hmm. brother got into them. It's like, hey, you know, you should check these guys if, if you like. You know, this band. I think you know Alice in Chains, Pearl Jam. Sure. Were, of those, of, of you know, Nirvana, Alice in Chains, Soundgarden, Pearl Jam, Alice in Chains, and um, Pearl Jam were my bands. Oh yeah, indeed. Oh, here we come. Here's the man, the cheetah. <laughs> And his wow. other thing is, um, you know, what are you doing the, the, the 90s in Seattle, the grunge, scene, the grunge scene, not much, man. We're just talking, yeah. But you know, like, uh, Wes, the uh, Seattle, the 90s, the, the Seattle 90s grunge scene in you know, the 90s. Oh, yeah, yeah. We all had our torn up jeans, all flannels, all, all band shirts, uh, the combat boots. But what they don't tell you is that some of those grunge people, baths yeah. were um, rare. Oh, Chabot, Anthony's playing River of Deceit from Mad Season right now. Awesome. Yeah, that was yeah, that was um one of his things. Wake what up. was it? Okay, what was the name of the band that, that they song. did? Um, you mean Temple of the Dog? Yeah, Hunger yeah. Strike. I'm going hungry. That's a good song. <laughs> <laughs> I want waffles. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Yeah, give me some waffles or. Fucking pancakes. <laughs> I uh, I wanted to ask everybody if if you have any like when did you 
personally discover Alice in Chains, wherever it might be, or what's the story behind that? Does anyone want to tell first? Again, I, I lived in Seattle, and we had a radio station. I don't know if it's still around anymore. 107.7, the end. So you were on, one of the first then. I yeah, but later on, though, we renamed it to The Trend. Okay. So we were playing all like, you know, playing the cool stuff to whatever was trendy. So it was okay. them and KISW, uh, 99.9, which always, we always get a kick out of KISW as KISW, Seattle's best rock. <laughs> 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 and we all like w yeah. Wicked Witch from the West yell or laugh, yeah, but it was it was like you listen to those two radio stations. Those are the ones that were gonna play like your Alice in Chains and all those other you know what was cool, not yeah. trendy, but what was actually cool that people actually liked. Sure. And again, like I said, later on the end betrayed us all and had to play what was ever trendy, mm -hmm. that alt rock stuff. Oh yeah, which I mean, sorry, but we have places around here that will only play stuff like that, you know. Lost Bones. Damn it, Bones. I just appreciate him coming up, man. Because not, not a farmer. <laughs> Bring back Bones. Bring back Bones. Bones. He was, he was saying that he, he would get lost. Because, I mean, Bone has I in, in terms of, of, of rap in Seattle in the 90s, I think Grunge kind of outdone it. Yeah. There was uh, the Phoenix Underground, I think, was what they call it. There was uh, Mercury and theaters like that. Oh, hmm. uh, there well, we go. How about you, Patrick? Did you have any? What was your first discovery well, of Alice in Chains? Uh, it was when uh, when grunge was hitting. I mean, they they started playing a lot of Alice in Chains, a lot of Soundgarden. Uh, you know, with Nirvana, uh, Sub Pop became like the the big label. Uh, every mm, yeah. um, Mm -hmm. There's other bands. The Fluid was was out. Um, uh, fine Young uh, Fine Young Cannibal. Not the Fine. Was Ooh, it yeah. Young Cannibals? It was, it was Fine Young Cannibals. Uh, I, think yeah, I remember them. I think. I think. Well, no, no, that was not the one. I'm thinking about. There's another band that came out. It was um. Uh, it was like a three piece, but they were super mellow. Uh, then there's the, the, the Spinanes that came out. Um, Seven Year Bitch. Uh, <laughs> I haven't heard that name in a long time. Seven year bitch. Uh, uh, there was a L seven. I mean, there was yeah. just, a, just a ton of great, you know, uh, Babes in Toyland when came out. They were rocking it too. So a bunch of these, you know, Screaming Trees, very yeah. very influential. Screaming Trees. Tad. Tad was yeah. Tad was amazing. They had a guy like twice your size as as the mm. front. He was amazing. He had a great voice. He was a big dude. Twelve and a half foot tall, man. Shit, Jesus. Man, they, do you think that when uh, Nirvana came on that song "Smell of Teen Spirit," do you think that really kind of just opened the door and caused all of this explosion when well, that song came it, out? I think the explosion had already happened in the north in the Northwest. It, looked, it was yeah. the rest of the country that caught up. That you know that was you know that that uh, smells like Teen Spirit. You know, everybody else already knew about it. You know, it was like. By the time this people over there in you know Michigan and Ohio found out about it, it was already like, oh, this is last year's. Oh, sure. You know, this is last. This is you know everybody else in the Northwest is going like, oh yeah, we we know about this. We've been listening to it for the last you know year and a half, two years. Sure. Uh, I mean it it took it takes a wide a while for the word to spread, especially on you know. Plus, local music. Seattle is it's its own little thing if you've never been there you don't understand you have it's hard to explain sure. it unless you go there it could be its own little you know it's kind of oh, hard yeah. to explain i bet Even i had to explain so to my I mom know. my mom had never heard about the gum wall i don't know if you guys if you guys have heard of the gum wall in seattle mm. i had to explain that to my mom and it started out some guy came out i want to say someplace over there by pike Lake market and he put his gum on a wall and pretty soon, over the years, people were doing this. And you can look this up, the Seattle gum wall. It's just this wall covered in gum, the people. And somehow, they get it up high. <laughs> and every now and then, they got to clean it. They got to go in with not just a suppressor cleanup, with biohazard suits. Jesus. And you have to scrape it. You have to, you have to scrape it. Uh, there's, a lot, the, there's, a lot yeah. good, there's a lot of good clubs in, in, in Seattle, too. Because a lot of good clubs yeah, when they had yeah. the earthquake, I think they mm. had to kind of tip very close some stuff down for hmm. structural reasons, of course. 
Like the, the Seattle undergrounds, like, you know, that old Seattle Garden City, that had to be closed down because they didn't want, you know, anybody going in there and, you know, something happened. So then there was, uh, like, uh, in uh, some of the old uh, sound, um, Pearl Jam music videos, like uh, Jeremy, when you see him performing, that's, mm -hmm. um, uh, I want to say that's the Mercury, but I could be wrong. Is that the same for the Even Flow song? Because yeah, it's a, it's a it's a theater there in yeah, Seattle. It looked like a local theater or something, you know. Good stuff, man. Been Even by that, never been in there, but yeah. Phoenix Underground was a was a club. It had yeah, a yeah. magazine. It had a magazine that was right above it. But when they had mm -hmm. the earthquake, it, the magazine place kind of, my understanding, kind of came a little bit into the club. Oh. So, that was Bob, Bob, is saying, Bob is saying that he's not a music guy. I thought well, he is. Guy. He is a music guy. Yeah, he is. He even had some metal, doesn't he? Yeah, oh, he, yeah. Was, he, was, he was singing. A, he was singing. A, he, was, he, was, he was singing a little bit of uh, the Scorpions to us earlier. See, look, oh, yeah. two, oh my God, that's not. I think I think he just did that. I came up, and all of a sudden now Bones is left. Man, maybe was it my breath? <laughs> Fuck. Could be. It, it isn't. Be. I don't think. I don't smell anything, man. I mean, other I'm back than my own order. Order. Damn. Because you know why? You know, because a lot of metal bands, believe it or not, a lot of the metal bands were influenced by the sound too. You know, a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of bands they changed the, they changed how they their looks. I mean, it was because you know because what what it did, the grunge uh, uh, movement basically it just it ended the hair bands. You know, mm -hmm. before the hair bands would just absolutely rule the strip. Oh, yeah. Bands were coming in from all over the country trying to, you know, come to L.A. You know, you saw that movie, Rock of Ages. That Rock of Ages movie is basically exactly how it went down. It really, that's exactly how it went. Sometimes bands would come in, whole bands would come in to try to, you know, try to get uh, uh, spots on the strip to play. Mm -hmm. A lot of times it would just be singers or, or you know, slingers or, you know, or, you know, axe men or drummers, and they and then the labels will put them together with different components. But mm -hmm. once the grunge scene came by, once once that happened, once Nirvana opened the door, man, a lot of those they became sort of like obsolete to the record companies almost overnight. Yeah, also, I remember. That, I remember hearing uh, that, that was guy, also uh, around the same Vince time. Maybe what was that? Dream. Also around the same time. Also, that's when you started getting people like Snoop Dogg, Dr. Dre. Mm -hmm. Those guys. So yeah. music, I think, overall was taking a change at that time. Well, personally, I really was just getting into like collecting music at the time, and the the video for Them Bones came on uh, MTV one day, and it just totally blew me away. I don't know what it was, but I that was the first video I saw from Alice in Chains, and it's a short song, but it's <laughs> powerful, man. But then Good. again, going with the uh, the, tr the the radio station, the end. It was what the late nineties. Um, Jaws of Flies comes out. Yeah, that was uh, late, late, I think stuff. that was uh, well, that, that that didn't come out in the late nineties. That came out in the mid early nineties, early to mid nineties. Yeah. No, no, no. I was, high, I was in I was in I was in Jaws of Flies came out when I was in high school. Oh man, I can't be. Uh... It and was, it was in the early '90s, at least. Yeah, but I think so it, too. Everyone loves that record. It's mainly acoustic, which kind of ties in with their whole, you know, that their successful acoustic set on MTV Unplugged. Yeah, you saw. Is that something you saw that you saw that happen too? Yeah, it was. It MTV, was not. Yeah, yeah. It was. It was. MTV it was, was so metal, and then overnight, it just went from grunge to alternative to punk. Yeah. yeah. Well, it, I mean, was, it, it, it was it was 94 i grew yeah. the hate i grew the hate that album because it got so much play airplay in the radio stations in seattle mm -hmm. that i heard it so much that i had a copy but i ended up throwing it away because it got overexposed sure i mean and, and you, you do that yourself you know i listened to that on repeat back back in the day same with dirt same with facelift i mean you just get obsessed with those albums. I, I, you know, I, I liked a lot of those bands that came through. Alice in Chains was a really solid band, but mm -hmm. man, honestly, if I had to choose one band from the uh, two bands, if I could get two bands from from the from that time Whoa. period, 
Bones! He's made his triumphant Hello. return. Hello. 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 I, I would have picked. I, I would have picked. Um, if I had two bands to pick from that time period, I, I definitely would be uh, Soundgarden, and uh, for sure, for Soundgarden would be one, and and um, uh, and the Gits would be the second. Um, that Black would those would, two, those would be the two bands well, that I would pick. Won't you come? <laughs> you remember that movie Singles? Of course. Look at those on the soundtrack: Alice in Chains, Chris Cornell. The Love Mongrels, Mud Honey, Smashing Pumpkins, Screaming Trees. Eddie, Vem Eddie Vedder was in there, right? Mud Honey was bad out. Yeah, Mother Love Bone, Paul Westerberg. Hmm. Well, that did help out a little bit, too, because it was right before. I mean, I think that Alice in Chains plays It Ain't Like That in the theater scene. Uh, from that film, which was great. I mean, it's one of their awesome, awesome tunes. And, well, hello, Lord Gary. How you doing, man? We're just talking a little grunge scene. and As I live and breathe. As I live and breathe, live and breathe. Lord Gary. Da, 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 da. Thanks for coming out, man. Well, um... And everybody, I swear, everybody I knew back then either had a Nirvana, a Pearl Jam, or a Sound... Oh, no, either, uh, sorry, it was either an Alice in Chains, Pearl Jam, or Nirvana CD. Don't remember anybody ever having a Soundgarden. You had one of... I you, don't had, know. Uh, you had an album in Seattle from one of those three, or you had, you know, from each. I had from each. Sure. I, wasn't a, I wasn't into Soundgarden. I didn't really kind of personally discover them until the super unknown album like bones was singing the you know black hole sun i'm pretty sure that's on super unknown but it takes a little while to discover other kind of bands you know i don't know it, if you have to choose two bands that's hard to do we used, yeah, to, make gotta jokes. Have we used to joke around about the song spoon man we'd be running around spoon man that's all we would say is <laughs> It was a big line to run around going, Spoon Man. People, if you didn't, if you didn't know about the song, people would be like, "Why are you screaming, Spoon Man?" It's a song. <laughs> well, I'm promoting Spoon Man. Here's a here's a small trivia. So I booked the Spoon Man. Uh, he came played Marsugis before uh, before he became famous. Before that song broke him, but he came and played at Marsugis. And let me tell you, that guy was the real deal. Um, it was sort of. It was honestly, honestly. You know, he, he had all these spoons and he played them and it was unique, but he, he, in a really weird way, it's, it was sort of like, it was sort of industrial almost, you know? Of course. It's like you hear him play and, 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 and it's click, 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 click. I mean, this is before, like, before he popped. Now okay. we wouldn't have been able to, we wouldn't have been able to get him if he would, if, it, you know, if he, if that hadn't happened, but he was touring with another band. And he was sat there and he played for about 40 minutes on spoons. That's all he played. And he and it was just amazing to watch. And I, I want to say his first thing was art, it was like Artie or artist or something like artist of spoon man or something like that. But yeah, he was he was well known before uh, before the song broke him. Well, didn't he appear in the video? Wasn't that the spoon man himself, or was that just an imposter? No, that was probably him. That was probably wow. him. Uh, Mother Love Bone. Uh, Mother Love Bone was it was a really another really strong band too, and but they didn't last very long because uh, I think their singer. I think he OD. and Andrew. Yeah, he uh, Andrew Wood did OD, and he, listening he to the did. stuff, it's it's talented. I love the stuff. You know, St Stargazer, Star Dog Champion, and Chloe Dance, and I think uh, Crown of Thrones, so, Thrones, Thorns, mm -hmm. or whatever. Usually those two are uh, Chloe's Dance and Crown of Thorns. It's usually when you find them, they'll use it together. What band oh. was Mark Lanigan in? Does anyone know? What Screaming, was it? Screaming Trees. Screaming Trees. Okay, I knew it was either that or Mother Love Bone. Yeah. I didn't really discover that dude until Queens of the Stone Age, but he's good. Yeah. And here's one. I forgot about this band because I was try trying to remember some of the old Seattle bands. Green River. Yeah. Yeah. Je right. Jeff, Jeff Amit, Stone Grassed. That's right, because uh, oh. that, that was uh, I think that was during a time where the there was a Green River Killer was out during that time, and they named it. Yeah. Been by there, you go by there part of it when sometimes on the freeway, you look mm -hmm. down. Some you look down, and someone have to go. You know, he's found all those bodies there. 
Hobbs has a like good question here. Has anyone listened? Hold on. Has anyone listened to the Kiss Unplugged album? I haven't. I used to watch that show though. I used to love watching that show though. Oh yeah. MTV's well, Unplugged. Mm-hmm. I yeah, did watch. Well, you know, that, was just, that was really strange when it went from when it went from being rock bands. You know, they do the acoustic sets. It was, mm -hmm. it was so weird how MTV just dropped it. You know, it it really showed you just how. So she cool. just how shallow is, you know the media was at the time. I mean, everybody would change their look and their in their vibe. You know, I mean, because all the rock bands were just they were they were kings. I mean, mm -hmm. it really was. And then and the drop of a hat when they when the yeah, band yeah yeah you got band, LL you got LL Cool J doing a, a acoustic cover of uh, Mama said knock you out. Yeah, that doesn't really is, match. Two um, Spears is awesome, though, Gary. I I must yeah. agree. They were a little before. What, what, band, what band did you listen to, Bones, when you were when you were a, a young Bone? Uh, what specific year are we talking about? Could be any. My yeah, favorite, any. Yeah. My favorite eighties band is Guns N' Roses. Hey, Jim. Yeah. Oh, yes. You want to step into my world? It's a socio-psychotic so state of bliss. It's, a, it's just a little song, but I love that one. Didn't they, uh, fucking one of the albums, one of the Use Your Illusions, get like censored or whatever because that song, Get in the Ring? Yeah, I mean, it's he's probably like, because it took out a lot of media people in that too. Yeah, he's you know? like, Get in the Ring, motherfucker. And he's supposed to name it all these different journalists, like, Get in the Ring, motherfucker. Come on, motherfucker, get in the ring. Yeah. It's like, oh. He, 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 yeah, you know, he could have did it though if he was like Huey Bull, you know, come on in, step into the ring and the spike. Well, yeah, back in nowadays, have you seen him nowadays? He's, he's not as bad as Vince Neil, who looks like Vince Neil ate Vince Neil. V Vince, Vince Meals. <laughs> <laughs> you know, they caught them like fucking lip syncing and like not even really playing the instruments. Like, what was it? The, the, I thought that was drum. Molly Crew. You know, yeah, it was cool. yeah, you start hearing the drum beat and the drummer's not even out there. All the guitarists yeah. just sitting there holding the guitar and he's like, you know. I don't know. Has, has, has Axel still got his voice or what? Oh, uh, last <laughs> time I, I heard him, it was like really bad. It was like, welcome to the jungle. Oh, we got yeah. body games. <laughs> it's like. I got a question for Bones. Like, Bones, what was your favorite Guns N' Roses album or song? Appetite for Destruction. Excellent yeah. choice. It has all their best songs except for one of the Use Your Illusions has November Rain, which is awesome. True. Yeah, uh, true. that's because I know that both of them have a, a, a variation of of uh, of uh, was it Don't You Cry? But, it, yeah, that's yeah, but one, one of them, too. like two different variations of it. <gasps> <It's> like, <laughs> and then Professor. Wait, oh, lies, 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 I think it was called, had one good song, Patience. Sure. Uh, it also Pretty had some professor. covers, I think. I think Lies Lies Eyes had covers also. I think they, one, one of them had uh, Mama. No. How oh, you doing, the, man? The professor. What? What? What did the professor listen to back in the day? Yeah. Besides Menudo. <laughs> Menudo. <laughs> uh. Well, no, I, I, I'm actually like a jukebox. I, I listen to pretty much anything. But I do like I, yeah. I I do like my favorite bands are Queen and Metallica, those okay. those are my two favorite ones. Oh, and Guns N' Roses before Axl Rose got fat. <laughs> hey, there's another good song on Lies that I, I actually love more than Patience. I used to love her. I used to love her, but I had to. But I had to she bitched so much, she drove me nuts, and I can still hear her complain. Hey, Lamonia, how are you doing? He's, let's see what she had to say here. I, I saw the DNR or Axl Rose's solo project twice because he was, because that shit was no Guns N' Roses. Uh, <laughs> his voice was horrible. And, and let's not forget, Axl was a prima he donna. Was, remember? Oh, yeah. He, from the entire get go, he, he, right here, he wouldn't get. Uh, he'd wait to get on stage, and then that story about uh, when uh, James from Metallica got set on fire. Mm -hmm. He caused a riot. And, and uh, Lars goes backstage. He goes, "Hey, you need to get on stage there." 
And he goes, he's like smoking a cigar and, and drinking wine. <clears throat> I can't. My, uh, my throat. Yeah, yeah that was you're his drinking excuse. Wine? Yeah. Motherfucker, he's like, it's like, motherfucker, you're drinking wine and smoking a cigar and your throat hurts? Yeah, you can do that all on stage. I don't see what's the point, you know? I mean, why, you know, he should have got his ass back but up. Here, but here's the real thing. question. Here's but, the real question. He wore, wore a skirt or a kilt, some, kilt sometimes. A kilt, yeah. W was he doing it traditionally and not, you know, woo underneath it? <laughs> I never saw his junk, thank God. But uh, you, uh, it, 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 all gonna do is I'll, only action yeah. can give. But no, 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 anybody who was front stage for one of the shows and was able to look right up and go, "Oh my God, it's tiny!" <laughs> <laughs> oh Lord, dude. I mean, not if you asked Axel, he'd be like, "Oh, it's you know, it's twenty inches long." Oh it's God, you out. gave me a, a flashback. You know that wrestler Hawk Hogan, who's known for his lies. Oh yeah, he told one. I'm Hulk Hogan. I got a ten inch penis, mm -hmm. and then they got him on the witness stand. Uh, I'm Terry. Hulk Hogan has a ten inch penis. I don't. <laughs> what the fuck are you the same person? So he's got a detachable version, then I guess. <laughs> Apparently so. Oh, uh, I saw Velvet Revolver with Slash and Duff, and Ooh, that yeah. was such a better performance. Scott Weiland. Did. Oh, that's right. Oh, I saw them live too. I think it was at an Allison Change show later years after Lane had passed, obviously. But um, they weren't that bad, you know. I wasn't really into them at the time, but Stone Temple Pilots. There's another good one. Yeah. Yeah. Geez, I passed on those guys, though, because I already knew about that guy, the uh, 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 his he was already strung out by then. They offered they offered me the label called him offered me the shot at, at Marsugi's, but I, I I turned it down because I didn't want to deal with the uh, with the drug abuse. Sure, I mean you you specifically like despise drug abusers is what I'm <laughs> what I'm oh feeling. Oh my god! Right? Well, no, it's not that. It's like you know what? If something happens, right? Something happens, like. Mm -hmm. I remember before, before I, you know, before I was just starting at Marsugi's, just starting, and we had one of the most infamous bands. I'm sure Wes will, will know this band right away. Mm. Maybe, maybe Bones as well. But do you guys remember a band called Flipper? Mm. I don't know. I'm familiar to me. Uh, I know of the Dolphin Flipper, but not the <laughs> <laughs> What are some of the songs? They were named. Uh, uh, they were named after that. So they were a San Francisco band. And and we were in the back. They were in the back, and and um, because we had a kitchen, and um, there's this. Okay, go back and tell them that you know they're going to come on in about ten minutes or so. You know, the, go back there, and sure, shit enough, there's two of the guys out there, sh you know, shooting a, a shot. They're they're fucking on heroin, and mm -hmm. I was just like, what the fuck? And sure enough, you know, you just he just you know, I didn't say anything because I had just started, but. There's just no way I would after that I would never let that happen again because you could lose your owner, the guy who's paying you. If some cop walked in there off their officer, you know you could lose your yeah. whole shit. You could lose your liquor license. You could lose your 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 property. You know mm -hmm. anything that happens there, you know it's on you. And if you if you you know so, but it was like a I I you know I never booked those guys either. I got call you know I got calls. Hey, can we, you know, who's the booker of the club place? You know, it's like me and, and it's, hey, can we, can we get a spot? And it's just like, no, I don't have anything, man. I don't have anything. I How didn't, you know, I didn't because I was scared shitless, man. I didn't want a band like that in the, in the, in the, uh, in the club. And that's, that's why. understandable, I, man. I mean. Yeah. But, that's why I turned down Sublime too, because by time that when we got him the first time through, um, his, his drug problem wasn't so prevalent. Okay. I'm sure he, I'm sure he had it, but it wasn't anything like it until until they got popped. You know, all of a sudden, next thing you know, and you know, they're here they are. When the first time they played, they they didn't play for anybody really. We had like 40 people there on a, on a Sunday, and and the next thing you know, they're they pop, and next thing you know, they're they're playing. You know, they're playing these bigger rooms, and mm -hmm. um, I, you know, I got a call asking for a date because they said they had liked the room and they wanted to play. And I'm just thinking, well, you know, but I said, there's just no way because that guy's strung out. And so I passed. I didn't tell him why I passed. I just said I didn't have a date. But I said, I can help you, though, because there's a guy across the street from me. He has a club and he, I'm, I'm sure I'm sure he would he would take the date. 
And so mm -hmm. I gave him the, the date of the club's number, it was, uh, my friend Chris from the Ajax. And um, I said, yeah, man, they, they you know, they want, uh, they want to book Sublime in, in the, at the Ajax. And when they came play the date, I was, off, I was across the street at my club. I had a band on, I had bands on, and I saw them roll up in their van. And Bradley was just, well, he was a spot. I mean, he couldn't even walk. They had to help him up the stairs. And then um, That's later on, later on, I found out that he couldn't. He 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 only did two songs. He couldn't stand. He had to sit down. He only did two songs, and he nodded off. Hobbs has a question here for you, Patrick. Uh, he said you also you also almost had Gigi Allen. Oh wow! Yeah. Oh my God! Same reason? <laughs> or the yeah? The well, you know what? That was that was totally me. Yeah. Well, if that had been cricket. That yeah. had been cricket. She booked the mentors, right? She booked oh. the mentors. She booked the mentors and left me left me holding the bag on that one. Oh, that was shoot. Fun. yeah. How that was that? the mentors. That was <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, wasn't that one of the fellas uh, that was rumored to have been the one who did Kurt Cobain at one point in time, and then. I don't there want to get all, into rumor and stuff, but there are all sorts of rumors back then. But I remember uh, 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 Gigi Allen's brother um, used to uh, go around and and book the shows. I mean, you see all the ads and stuff like that, and and I'm not sure if, I'm not sure if they have uh, that on uh, on YouTube uh, a Gigi Allen performance because oh my god, that guy was just a it was a walking nightmare. And I did take the phone call. They did call me, and I told them. Uh, with with clear intent, fuck no, not mm -hmm. gonna. <laughs> well, it's got to be a nightmare for a you know a person that's running a venue for Gigi Allen to come into town, even if it's only Merle that's calling you to set it up, but or whatever. I mean, we there had was, he would leave the place in ruins. Oh god, there was an incident on Saturday Night Live with a band, uh, an eighties. Fear, that was fear. That that oh, Lucy yeah. brought in and yeah, that was fears. Fear came in and did that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Lauren Lauren Michaels was not too happy about that. Yeah, um, they got perma banned, right? Yeah, that's yeah, that's a shame too because Fear was actually a pretty fun band to watch. I saw them play at the Cactus Club, and uh, that was fun as hell, man. That was a that was a raging pit. That was a great pit. I bet, I bet dude. Well, so this is, a, it's a Lord short, yeah, yeah. It's a short list of who's been banned from Saturday Night Live, but everybody, probably, you know, they got a reason why they've been banned. Sure. Well, I'm yeah. sure there's got to be a reason. Otherwise, Lord Gary here says I saw Ozzy Osbourne tribute called Wizards of Oz. <laughs> I wonder if the band Iron cool. Maidens is still around. Uh, you know like gals. Oh yeah, they they're were like, like yeah, they're around. They're around. there. sheesh. Man, I remember those guys. Those guys were still playing back when I was working. Yeah. Yeah. Oh boy. Oh, uh, I have a question. I I, I don't yeah. know if you've touched upon it, but and if so, well, you'll let me know. What make what do you guys think makes a uh, makes artists uh fall into drugs? You think it maybe it's the music producers that give it to them to control them easier, or or is it just no, the, I... the hustle of bustle of of going on tour and it's just takes its toll on people or just to just to fill out the uh, the rock star stereotype that oh well I'm a rock star so I gotta do it. That's almost it right there, Professor. I mean, oh, it's, oh, it's there. It, 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 really, it. it really, it's really, it, it's sad to say. It's sad to say because you you're looking for a deep thought, like you know what could make a band, you know what could make a guy do that, a guy or a girl shoot up. I mean, what, what deep meaning is there behind it? And when you find out that. It's because that uh you know they feel this part of the look. It, it's the saddest thing ever. Like blues players, oh my god! Every it, it country for country, it's, it's the drinking. They, they they have to be seen drinking to be you know like oh he's true country because he's because he's drinking. With blues, it's like oh that guy's deep, and there has to be heroin. And 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 for rock bands, it could be sex. You know, a lot of times had to do with sex, and then it got into drugs. Um, it's, man, that's a that's a it, it really is that simple. Peer pressure. Have you ever well, seen that uh, Chris personally. Holmes that Chris Holmes interview? I think it is. No. Um, uh, Western decline, the decline of Western civilization, the metal years. 
He was the guitarist no, or whatever. Bones is gone, Gary. Yeah, he, he was the guitarist for um, Wasp. And he's in the pool with his mom sitting next to the pool. He's fucking chugging. lit. And he's just he, like, yeah. yeah, wasn't he chugging a bottle of vodka or something? Yeah, like, and he's telling his mom, give me another it. one. He's still alive. And he actually did an update in that video. He's sober now, at least. But he's fucked up, though, now. I mean, he really. He's, he, went yeah, but he, but he's, shit. yeah, but again, it's good that he's sober, but it's kind of weird. It's like, he decided to do kind of a little kind of, you know, remember that, an update to that interview, but this time he's sober. Mm. Personally, I, as a, as a musician speaking, at least, or a former musician, whatever you want to say, it wasn't, uh, you know, it really wasn't peer pressure for me. It was just, I was just trying to kill the pain, really. I mean, whatever it was and there are gateway drugs you know and people that are in music also prefer to do some drugs i don't know it's a a style choice or anything but um it wasn't i wasn't trying to fit in by doing drugs but i i certainly wanted to stop some mental pain that i was having that's just my personal story but well, uh, I guess it's also very similar to happen what would happens with wrestlers because they put their body through shit, and so they're all, they're oh, always in pain. So they gotta they gotta you know. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's, that, 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 well, that's why Mick stuff. Foley. But that's why Mick Foley wouldn't do didn't want to take painkillers because he'd seen too many guys. Mm -hmm. You know, they they were like I'm in pain. Uh, I'm gonna take uh this or that. And you listen to the stories that they used to have the uh the old fanny packs. There was what Percocets. Uh, what was it? What else was in there? Was it Quaaludes? They like literally a pharmacy of drugs, mm -hmm. of this and that in these bags. There is a famous story of the rest of the warlord. So he told somebody that he needed his steroids. So he had somebody his needle and he turned around, dropped his back of his pants. He's like, put it in. And the story goes closely, but the guy with the put the needle in, it fit. Uh oh. It's like holy shit! Wow. I think you've had it. I think you've had enough. If it's just gonna. Bit, Ben, when wow. goes in. No kidding, man. Damn. You know, wow. one thing about about touring bands too, especially the more successful they got, you know, a lot of people say, "Well, they're always rough on the road, rough on the road, rough on the road." Mm -hmm. But you know, believe it or not, I, I know a lot of bands that came and played and and whatnot. Fuck, man, they actually ate better than the people probably coming to the show to watch them. You know, it wasn't like it wasn't like nutrition was a, a was a, a was a problem. Uh, I mean, maybe for a, maybe for a band that's out of, out of a van, sure, you know, it was a little rough, you know. But I'm talking about the the big star, you know, the big superstar bands. Man, their writers were like, I mean, their writers, they had every, everything was there, you know, like you know, you know, water, beer, you know, coke, yeah. and, and you know, like food, you know, like you had a uh, you had all this food in the back for them, and then you fed them dinner, then you get them, then you give them a voucher for dinner. And you sent them off to the really good restaurant. I mean, it wasn't like the fact that, you know, these guys didn't, you know, they, and they had, you know, they had downtime, you know, they did have downtime. Mm. Mm, uh, sure. You know, and, you know, it wasn't like, you know, like it was like, you know, they were sure they were playing one date after another, after another, but, you know, a lot of times, you know, a lot of the bands just, they would come out there, press the flesh and they would get caught up in the hanging out, you know, instead of like a, a, a one artist, really uh, really well known went straight on the bus did her show went straight back on the bus saved her energy and that was pat benatar didn't hmm. let anybody else on the bus just you know like did her job came back relaxed she knew it was for a long haul you know and that was one of the sure. things you know and it was almost it's almost funny because you hear about young athletes um you know you hear about them growing broke or losing all their money and this and that you know, and I always thought, you know, bands need the same sort of financial advice, you know, as some of these, uh, uh, some of these uh, uh, athletes, sure. uh, I mean, you know, they needed that. They needed someone to come in there and say, okay, listen, here's what's going to happen. You know, the first and foremost thing is we're going to pay off your advance, but everybody's going to be on, 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 a, on a salary. Everybody's going to be, you know, get a, a pay a certain amount of money per week. That's, that's your expenditure. That's your spending money. Mm -hmm. You know, whatever you can, you know, so please don't go beyond that. You know, you don't draw against it. I mean, if anybody ever did that, which no, no agent and no manager ever did that I know of. No, none. 
Mm-hmm. I mean, I mean, they, they, I never heard anybody. I, I mean, just a couple of times where an, 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 an agent would call up and ask us to keep an eye on like any, any money's agent was one. Oh my gosh. He, he asked us, please check the cups that Eddie's drinking out of. He told us that he told us that. So we had to go there and he was drinking out of those red solo cups. We had to go in there and make sure that he wasn't getting all sauced up. Before the show, mm. after the show, we didn't give a rat's ass. It wasn't our responsibility. But before the show, so we would make sure that someone came by, make sure that he was actually drinking non-alcoholic shit before. There is. I don't know if you guys oh. remember that. It's a the, the story was oh, poison. Hey, Lord Gary. Hey, Katie. Oh, you guys remember that the, the story was poison? Katie. Was it? Hello. Yeah, the, it was. It was. Yeah, there was a story was poison. They were on MTV on one of the award shows. Mm-hmm. And what's his name? Um, the guitarist. Um, he was lit or something. And everyone else was supposed to do another song. He's lit and he's playing a different song. Mm, yeah, I heard about and that. They're, yeah, they're literally stopping looking at this guy like, uh, dude, this is live. What the, f-? you know, it's on TV. You know, what the fuck are you doing? See, but that you was also have to. Was it CC Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I mean, but, you know, all this. They haven't been said. There are a number of at least hardcore bands, hardcore punk, if you will, that are what they call straight edge, and yep. they refuse to do anything. I mean, like yeah. from alcohol to yeah, drugs al- to... alcohol free, drug free, tobacco free. Sure, and there's even like Earth Crisis. That minor guy threat. is a staunch minor threat. Started minor, it all. Minor threat started it off. They sure did. And yeah, I forgot. Did I say, "Hey, Katie, how yeah. you doing, Katie?" That 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 wrestler CM Punk when he would paint that, he had that black X on his back of his on his wrist tape. Yeah, I guess he said that comes from when you would go in this all ages show. They would put a black X in the back of your hands and let them know you don't get any alcohol. Yeah, and so yeah, that's where that. that comes from. Yeah, yeah, but the minor threat was the purveyor of straight edge, you know, and. But, but uh, well, Earth had, Crisis took it to another level, man. They we had uh we had bands like that, Wes, that would come in and they would tell us that you know even though it was on the rider per se, but they would actually make sure the manager would come up there and say, "Listen, man, we don't want any we don't want any any alcohol on the back. Uh, sure. We're not we're not about that." And you know, yeah. and it wasn't you know, and so it wasn't it wasn't necessarily because they had a problem; it's because they just didn't like it. So they right. said, "Yeah, you get rid of that," you know. Um, sure. A lot of times it was on the rider because their friends might want to have a beer or two, but for you know, but the, some of the bands that played during during with us, they would sit there and say that we don't, we really don't want it. They can get their own. They can get their own. They can drink what we have back here, or they can get their own. And mm-hmm. you know, a lot of times that would happen. Yeah. Well, uh, some a straight edge is very staunch about these things. You know, there's no exceptions. You know, I mean, at least with what they will consume you know themselves but some of them are a little more accepting than others but there are some that are just all out you know which i can understand i mean it was a good thing to to be happening i don't know if they're really keeping to it these days the bands that used yeah. to are but well, like some of them have a reason to like go going to that wrestle to cm punk he's told the story that his dad his biological father was an alcoholic and he tells the story of his dad coming to pick him up from school, driving him home, and he's hanging his head out. His dad's hanging his head out the window, puking his guts out. Oh god! And, and, and you know, punks in the, the passenger seat crying, hoping nothing's wrong with his dad. It's like, yeah, I can see why someone's going to be anti-alcohol after to see that kind of shit growing up. Sure, yeah, and man. that's usually how it happens too with uh, you know, children of drug abusers. They see what happens to their parents. And I uh, see and they my, don't want to go through hey, the same thing. My dad was an alcoholic, but he did the classes. And I think the one thing he got taught is once an alcoholic, always an alcoholic because the urge is always there. Yeah. I have a brother. I have I have a brother who's possibly an alcoholic. I am borderline alcoholic because it's in my blood. I, I have an automatically like for so, so many people in my family. So you have a predisposition to alcohol basically triggers yes. you now to... T- tobacco i found a good way to get off tobacco when you go to the doctors and he says i'm hearing a funny sound from your heart and lungs do you smoke yeah and they give you that look like you may stop 
But when they tell you they hear something <laughs> nice, you go. Right. It's, it's usually just enough. Um, yeah, I've been warned by doctors, you know, and um, I I did my best to try and quit, but damn, it's, it's hard to do. Smoking yeah, I, 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 know, I know it's one thing, though, Wes. I mean, I have noticed one thing, man. I, it does seem like you're trying. It's You slow down a lot, that's for sure. Um, well, yeah, man. Totally. I, I noticed. I noticed that, man. You don't. You're not chain smoking like you like you were yeah. a while ago. You know. Right. We, we like got in the garage. We, we, we got to introduce uh, West to a new a new thing. Coffee. Uh, coffee's great. The same. <laughs> uh, well, I mean, I love some caffeine. You know these. Hey, hey I'm, I'm, I'm going to be trying a new coffee. I've been hearing about called uh, Fire Department Coffee. Apparently, it's been some firemen started this coffee up. Some of the proceeds supposed to go to help you know first responders and stuff. Mm -hmm. So I'm all for it. It's supposed, but, to, it's, uh, supposed to buy, it's supposed to buy defibrillators so when people have heart attacks from coffee, they're able to go in there and save their life so they can buy more coffee. <laughs> coffee causes heart attacks? Uh, Shit. Uh, hey, hey, odds <laughs> okay. Again, you know, Seattle, uh -huh. Seattle loves its coffee, so I'm pretty sure some of these bands backstage, you know, in Seattle nowadays, probably the last 20 years or so, it's not going to be, is there any alcohol? It's a coffee. I need coffee. Starbucks. Tully's. Yeah, oh, I, I, I kind of envy... I kind of envy coffee drinkers because because I drink coffee and it does nothing to me. But I see people like turn walk up like zombies and then drink coffee and then they wake up and perk up and everything. I'm like, mm. what do you <laughs> put on your coffee that I don't? <laughs> uh, you're, you're drinking the wrong coffee. Yeah, you can't, you can't be drink. You can't be drinking that Folger shit. You got to be drinking oh. that Starbucks. You see, don't, don't go okay with coffee. Don't go with the big name brands like Folgers. Go with mm. more like the smaller ones. It's gonna be better. And not to be weak and shit like Forges. Well, there's oh, one thing that's true. Between... Or, you, or you can drink the weaker version of Starbucks, which is still plenty damn good, and that's Seattle's best. But that's still <laughs> a good that's, that's, that's actually made by uh, uh, Starbucks. Seattle's best is made by Starbucks. It's slightly weaker, and it's, but it's a lot more affordable as well. But there's a reason. Okay, I'm, I, okay, I'm going to do something that's going to get me in trouble with Seattle. I'm going to give you guys the truth, the hidden secret about Seattle's best. That's what the broke you guys in. You're coming to Seattle and trying the real shit. That's why we give it, sell it to you guys. So, uh, you know, the rope you guys in. God, and now I know the Seattle people are coming down my door any minute now. Be like, uh, you need to talk. Oh, no, we lost Echo. <laughs> <laughs> Damn it. Well, you... <laughs> well, here, here's the one for, for Pat. Here's one for Pat. Know that's... <laughs> you know, there's the stories about these different demands the bands have. Somebody had like the separating the different, was it Skittles or MMs of a different color? Oh, yeah, yeah, there's well, a reason why they did that. Yeah, the test, the test whether or not, you know, they're yeah, actually they're really, Yeah, I think it was anything, Kiss, you know, Van Halen, I think it was, I think it was Van Halen or Kiss yeah. that did that. They, did you get anything they like sure the writer was being yeah. read? Did you get anything like that that was particularly weird that just made you kind of go, Oh my gosh. <laughs> so, so, uh, my boss, my bosses, Jimmy and Neostic, they love me, they love the hell out of me because we had the guy before me, his name was, uh, 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 George and uh, oh, Joe. Uh, oh, 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 gosh, that was not George, it was uh, Jovan, something like that. And uh, he would he would have a tendency to go through the rider and he would leave things intact, right? So, like, he would you know, he wouldn't cross it out. So, if you don't cross it out, you don't take it out, you're expected to have it there. So, you know, so here it is the day of the show, and the, the manager comes in there. And he takes the fax report of the of the writer that you that you sent back with the contract, right? You sent back the contract with the, with the with the uh, with you know half the uh, with the advance money, and if you weren't careful with that writer about taking care of, of taking care of shit, you would find yourself getting a lot of stuff. I mean, you send a couple of guys out to Costco and they come back with half a truck full. Me, on the other hand. Coming from Marsugi's, where we didn't give shit to anybody except for two beer tickets, man, I was just—I was a surgeon. I would just go through, just cut out everything, and I get I get agents that be calling Jimmy. I'm going like, man, there's nothing. What's what's left for us? Well, you get, you know, what do you mean? It's just, I just, you know, you just sent, you just faxed back the writer, and there ain't nothing on it that we're getting. And he goes, no, no, we're not. <laughs> and they go like, that's sort of fucked up. He says, no, that's 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 how it is. And so he says, we'll feed them. And we'll give them dinner, 
you know, but yeah, but we're not going to give them every single, I mean, because the, you know, it's like, it was sort of like throwing a big old mud ball against the wall. Whatever stuck is what you got on your rider. And mm-hmm. so if you weren't careful about that, you could be, you could be up for a lot of mud. Um, but I, when was that decided, though? What what point during the negotiation of the contract itself was that you know? Let, well, did they I find, know about I, that? Find, I find that too. Um, uh, I went through the, I went through that as well. Um, uh, Jimmy signed off for the advance, but everything else I signed off on. So it was my signature on on that contract. I did the writers, I did lighting, I did load in, I did hotels, I did all that stuff. That was all on me. Um, Yasek, Yasek, since he was the club owner, he was paying them freight. And he would also do the half the money, but I would be the one. I'd be the one responsible for taking it to the post office and making sure it got sent off. And believe me, that sounds really simple, but you'd be surprised how many clubs something would happen to that advance. And if you didn't have the if you if you didn't if they if the band did not have their advance by the time they rolled inside your venue, you weren't getting the show. You weren't getting a the show. They would they would be maybe more than happy to back that ass up and take it on down to the next venue. Well, and, yeah, then, bet. And, you know, <laughs> and then and then after that, then you wouldn't be getting anything from that agent or that agency if you did that. Wow. Well, I guess that's kind of like earnest money, you know, on a, a house or something. You know, it's kind of like their down payment. You know, uh, the the reason why they come to play if you know uh, if they're getting paid, I'm sure that they you know sure they want to get it so yeah how about you uh, professor are you familiar with alice in chains at all yeah it's not my like i like my all-time favorite band but i like them i, I like them i like iron maiden i like judas priest that's breaking cool the law. breaking the law <laughs> yeah 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 but, I, I, but yeah I, I don't i don't know i'm kind of weird i might listen to just some random ass a song on the radio and i'm like i like the, that tune yeah. But you know, I'm a, I'm a weird. When it comes to music, much like my taste in in movies, I <laughs> like uh, stuff hey, from all over the place. When, when uh, no one's no. around, when no one's around, he's listening to you. Rico, suave. suave. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> like no one's gonna know. Put oh, I must way. admit, uh, my favorite uh, decade for music is the '80s. Uh, anything from the '80s. Oh yeah. Still well, the hey, I, best I decade for this, music. I have this theory. About anyone who has Mexican in them, there is this singer, may she rest in peace. Um, a bitty bitty boom boom. God, oh, Selena, no, is it like all suddenly like now she's in all blood? Like, if you're Latino, you're Mexican, you got to be like bitty bitty boo boo. Because <laughs> <laughs> I love the shit out of her. I'm like, it must be because I'm part Mexican, I think it's a Mexican thing. Yeah, I'm not gonna lie. I didn't know about her until you know what happened to her happened because I, I didn't follow oh, her wow. music. I didn't That's even good. see the the movie because uh, I'm not a, a J Lo fan. So, but I, I know of her. You know of her, but sure. <laughs> no, no, we've established this, uh, and I don't want to get Wes's stream in trouble. But I am not a butt man. I am a boob man. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's uh, there's a similarity you gotta admit you know the you know the back in the day the neanderthals would follow women around looking at their butts so they developed a butt on their front so you know <laughs> with, with a couple tassels on there you know and it made Ooh. you know drew the attention away oh, from we got Ant. a question for wes wes what is your what is your favorite scary movie so wes Oh man! Well, you know, I don't normally play favorites like that because I love them all, but most of them, at least, and my uh, my probably favorite scary movie would be scary movie. <laughs> yeah, no, 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 no! You know, what, you know what a scary movie? Favorite scary movie is the 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 disaster movie made from the guys who did scary movie. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, I personally like. Um, gore films. I, I, I like, um, God, my favorite scary movie. Damn, I'll have to get back to you on that one. But there's too many to name, but I'll think about it and let the rest of the panel answer. And then I'll just, just name your favorite one, which was uh, Airplane. <laughs> yeah, uh, that was certainly surely, frightening. <laughs> surely, you, surely, you can't be serious. I am. You don't call me Shirley. <laughs> uh, yes, See, I, I just got that new uh, Wild Eye 
Freaking, I go to that video store, St. Jack's. I go, hey, look, it's a wild eye. It's a raw and extreme in the wild. Man, that's that's crazy. That you found a, a a wild eye out in the wild, man. But a raw and extreme. Yeah, that too. I've seen, I've seen wild eyes every now and then, but I've never seen a raw and extreme. Because yeah. I got frogs and dead and breakfast. The the only time I've come across one oh. is I found the the raw and extreme one for uh oh shit oh Wes help me out what's the name of that one the one that has the the the, the slasher movie that has the guy with the mask that looks like a butt oh saw the maniac yes that's that's the only one I've, oh, I've come across I guess Hobbs has okay. a serious question for us oh god first uh, I'll also... just give a, a quick answer to uh, Gary uh let's just say my favorite movie is Possession by Andrei Jawalski uh he wants us to go Wall. to five eight see. There we go. There we go. Saw that last part coming. <laughs> on, on Tito and and what Trent, Tito and Tarantula, and yeah, oh, only if only if you come up and bring bones with you. He he had to sneak that. You down, Hobbs. Come on. He, he had to sneak Hobbs. that last part Hobbs in. Standard. That's what he did. He snuck that last part in just to. <laughs> yeah, is he talking about Tito's? The, no, here's the, one the for alcohol? you. We have these bands that either do face paint or like guar. What do you think about mm. those kind of bands? I love guar, by the way. They're all, they're all they're all pretty solid, actually. Guar was a fantastic band. The fun, to, they're fun to watch. Yeah, I mean, heavy as hell. Hell. Great now, lyrics. I've always wondered because they don't seem to like the band uh, Lodi. I don't know if you've heard them. There's yeah, two different, yeah. There's, there's, there's two different Lodis. There's a singer and then there's a band. And whenever they like interview them or talk about the band, they're like, oh. Fuck those guys. It's like, is that is that serious? Or are they just you know goofing around? Tito and Tarantula. Is that are those wrestlers or alcohol? Is that a uh, band I don't or a movie? The reference to myself. I'm not sure. Hobbs, would you uh, elaborate? Hobbs needs, to, Hobbs needs to come back up to, to explain this to oh, us. Oh, it's a band. Oh they were in uh they did the song Angry Cockroaches and some other stuff for uh from Dust to Dawn. Oh, cool. Okay. So the the were they the band that we see in the club in uh, Titty's Twister playing it? Yeah. Okay. Well, that makes more sense. I mean, I'm not too familiar with that band myself, but I have seen those movies, so I suppose I am in inadvertently actually very familiar yeah. with them but <laughs> i didn't know they were a real band I, I just thought they were like a movie band because i saw them on rod house and and uh from dust till dawn but i was but there's so many fake bands that pop up in movies i just thought they were you know like a, a movie yeah. band i didn't know they were sure. actually a real thing right well remember remember oh, in uh, Pulp fiction how uh dick dale had a renaissance they were playing Mr. Lou on on on, on pulp fiction Oh yeah, so, and uh, yeah. Sometimes, sometimes those retro bands they get a they get a breath of fresh air, you know, in a movie like that, you know, in a concert scene or something like that. And next thing you know, you know, they get a revival. You know, people want to mm -hmm. hear them again. Hell, yeah, we, look at we did look three at shows some, with Dick Dale and sold out all three shows. Look, look at some of these trailers wow. for movies. The thing is now, we even see it recently. If you've seen the trailer for um, uh, Borderlands. They're using all these old songs from the 70s and 80s. I think, uh, what was it? One of the Guardians of the movie, uh, Ooga Chaka, Ooga Chaka. Uh, oh, yeah, uh, yeah. I, I forget what the one Tom is. Tom Jones. Uh, yeah, they're like, they bring these old songs out. It's cool. Mm. It's like, I haven't heard well, that song in a while. The song is not the same old fucking songs. Like, every time there's a movie about Vietnam, you always hear about clearance. You either hear, you either hear, yeah, the only thing you ever hear is like, were, were, the, were that the only two bands that were that were that were being played in Vietnam was the Rolling Stones and and and, and CCR? I don't know, crazy. man. I mean, oh, yeah. <laughs> and by the way, Lamonia, you're right. Dave Brocky was the man. Just I, I was waiting for a moment to say that. Sorry, guys. It's okay. It's it's a song okay. for the for Borderlands. It's the song "Do You" from Electric Light Orchestra. Uh, yeah, they bring uh, all these old songs. Uh, uh, Chaos just said that it's the six day finale 
for the big sale do 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 we need do we need to uh bring that up and talk about it or yes okay. because i be right back no, just, be right back what, who's chaos oh no the coffee and, people finally got the echo and, and the mc K, mc uh chaos oh he he just master chaos him. oh yeah, master chaos. he just oh snap uh let's see what What's, he said what he where's said. the sale what's the I, I, let's get let's go oh shit we could be we could be some baller action right here <laughs> Who, who's having the sale though is it uh i don't know i don't know i'm gonna i'm gonna bring it over there uh i'm bringing it up i'm bringing it up uh oh, let's see okay. let's see uh it's only just it's only really a, a really a quick video it's 23 minutes you want me to send it to you yeah please sure all right. Hopefully the sale isn't over, you know, uh, by the time I get to it. But uh, you never know, man. Uh, I, no, I, I hurt sale? myself with it, some it, no, sales. No, no sleep till Kino Lorber sale. <laughs> oh, well, yeah. The Kino. You, you mentioned that the other night, wasn't it? Yeah. Well, hopefully. Uh, I haven't really done a whole lot of Kino collecting. I think I have like 15 titles or so. But. Um, I do like their stuff. They they do a good job. And I, I like, have the entire redemption. Go I ahead. like their releases for the older stuff. Uh, uh I have a couple of Kino Loblers for new movies, but they're not they don't seem as packed as uh, what the, they work I, of, of I, bleh, brain fart. Sorry. No, my fault. <laughs> yeah, uh, I like their treatment of older movies because they seem to pack it with more special features, but their newer movie releases, they don't seem to give the same tender love and care. No, I think I think you know reason why is because why mm. should I mean there's nobody out there to compete against them, so why should they go out there and spend the extra money and care when they know that that they're only they're one of the only few th one of the few left in town, you know? Sure, but well, how the criteria is a, Criterion no, always gives uh, their their releases uh, some good amount of special features. They're kind of hard oh, to yeah. come by on the wild, but the, I still all of my Criterion always have a lot of good stuff in them. That's because Criterion is still on the top of the food chain, though, when it comes down to boutique, uh, boutique hey, ball, right? I got, um, I, I, I got good news, bad news. I was able to fend the coffee people off. That's the good news. Bad news, I told them that Wes made me uh, tell them the secret. So they're coming for you now, Wes. It's cool. It'll take them a couple hours. <laughs> uh, so oh, no. And they have a good reason. Wes, and, uh, I did uh, a lot of there, there you go, Lamania. Uh, 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 Hops is saying is that Synopsis also has a sale, Wes. Yeah. I know. I was trying to uh, tell you guys that I brought it up on the screen, and then bring 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 bones back up. I bring prefer bones, bring, bring, bring bones, back. bones back up. Well, I can't just conjure the man, you know. I'm sure he's in the chat or something. Hello, hello, Burns. <laughs> bring, bones. Bones. Bring, 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 bring bones back up for Synopsis stock. Bones, we got chicken Bones. wings. We got chicken wings. Bones is like a wizard. He he always pops up when you least expect it. Yeah, and then, yeah. All you have to do is sit there and say, "Well, it's just like with Wes. All you have to sit there and say is boutique, and then then stand back and wait for like five seconds, and they'll they'll show up." <laughs> oh, like Professor, just yeah. say a big gothic, say big gothic boobs, and <laughs> big what? Where? 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 Uh, uh, yep, MVD has a sale. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Off of synapse. Oh snap. MVD? MVD. Well? I think I That's looked at that and only saw a few of them I actually might get. Really? Damn. Man, I already spent money I, to buy stuff online, already, even if it's on spent, sale. I already spent all oh. my Hamilton money. <laughs> Damn. Man. See, oh, I see they have a I see the Severin Severin 50% off flash sale. Oh, Severin yeah, itself. But, yeah, MVD. but you won't get your shit till next year. Uh, yeah. Now through, yeah, now through April, yeah. yeah, now through April fifteenth. Oh, okay. man, no, that it, I can do. Although uh -oh. the, the synapse is always good, but uh -oh. not necessarily Severin. I I love them and all. I collect them, but uh, some of the titles they've been putting out just aren't for me. But Walmart See, has the five dollar steel books. No kidding. Yeah, What's right. going on that everyone has a sale? Is it because of the eclipse? They're trying to get rid of their merchandise? Maybe. Yeah, they're like, it might be the end of the world. You never know what these eclipses. Let's just do a big sale. I don't know. <laughs> Sorry to say, man. Hey, you can get overboard. 
for twelve forty eight. Wow, oh, there you go. And, and that's a Severin because that's under the Severin. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Like I, I used Kurt to Russell like that movie back yeah. in the day, but Tom? Go ahead. yeah, sorry. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a and, good and, and film, ben, not not all Ever Walmart, in? not all WalMarts have the five dollar steel books. The Echo can tell you for certain. They have a, I oh. mine only have the twenty and up steel books. Oh, so they bought them from the Best Buy uh, when they um, did their. And I I looked media. in the, I yeah I looked in my uh, the bins. We have two bins. We have the five dollar bin and the seven fifty bin. I went through both of them. I heard there was an earthquake in New York, Lemoyne. Yeah. Where do yeah. you live, Lemoyne? If you don't mind selling, it's fine. Ooh, but... Sin for Dwarf for fourteen ninety eight. Oh, that's a steal. <laughs> that was like the uh, that was like the official movie of the Midnight Hour for the longest time. Yeah, it got passed around like a some of the $2 stuff. Yeah, like some like. Of, like a, like like a like a like a twelve year old at a Jeffrey Epstein's party. Oh, <laughs> nice. some of the stuff I've noticed that some of the stuff, some of the stuff selling out. Ooh, oh man, don't be telling me this shit. I... Ooh, Day of the Animals. Oh, damn, it, damn it, Echo! I almost called you. <laughs> hey, Day of the Animals. You can get, you can get West, Day West of is, the West is, West is missing his his boutique baller buddy right now. Oh, I know, oh, right? <laughs> well, that's man, I, maybe, I, I really I really want to see that man. One of these days, you and Bones have got to do a boutique baller show. Yeah. Hey, maybe that's that, maybe that's why Bones disconnected. He he's logging online yeah. and buying all those sales. Yeah. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Hey, I can't blame him. Bones could be balling right now. He might just be. Oh, I, I got to tell you, it's very possible. I like this. I like this aerial. I like this arrow video, man. I was like, damn, that guy's got a really nice arrow collection going. Yeah, he's yeah, got Dave really Dweller. Nice. He's got a lot of them I haven't even seen I, or heard of. They're nice. I was like, damn, I, 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 I have sheesh. I think I, I, honest to God, I think I have like one or two arrows in my whole, my whole thing. And then he was popping off, and I was like, man, this is a, this is a great collection he's got. Oh yeah, it's nice. It's cool. It is cool, man. I, I, I did enjoy that video myself. So, uh -huh. yeah, probably made, yeah. Probably, probably made your hands itch, didn't it, Wes? Yeah, a little bit. Hey. Well, I was like, oh my god! Every time I find an arrow in um, Fye, they're always just so overpriced. Oh and, god! But that place is you know, bad. I don't know. I, I you know, I, you would think of all the video stores that would have went out first, and no one shed a tear about. It would have been Fe Fe F Fye. Those right? guys are so hideously expensive. Yeah, like double, double the double what you would like pay for at Tower Records. Or even on Amazon, man. Like you, you I think of the base price for a slip cover arrow is like thirty four ninety five or something, and that's just obscene, you know. I mean, yeah, but back in the day, Suncoast uh, was like that. All the titles yeah. that Suncoast used to be overly expensive. Yeah, yeah, I love $34, Suncoast. Thirty four dollars. Thirty four dollars. That'd be me and the Bethesda combined at a, at, a, at a flea market. Hell yeah. <laughs> Man, I I totally understand. I wasn't able to find them on Amazon or anywhere else, so I was just like, I gotta just take the gouge, whatever. I couldn't help it. Mm. So what's it? What's your uh, what's your back wall look like now, Wes? You, have you got anything new since you did us a movie tour? You haven't done a you haven't done a movie tour in a long time. I know, I know. Well, it was suggested to me that I should uh, private my other movie like you know collection videos that i had done before and i'm thinking about doing it again but by by boutique label or by label in general because i have them all you know cornered off into their own sections there and it will be a lot easier to produce those other yeah. than the entire thing how many how many isc movies do you have now from the last time we did this <laughs> well, that's a good question. They're scattered all throughout, you know. I mean, so it's hard to say. I probably have a good twenty or thirty of them. Oh snap, man! Uh, Baller, 
What the <laughs> fuck? They want $45 for the Birdemic trilogy on Blu-ray. Right now it's on sale for $24, $22. Dude, that's yeah. not even worth $0.22. Cents. Man, Let alone forty five dollars. I got to admit, I love Severin, but uh, well, you know, kind of. I, I and that just, is one of the Severin ones. Getting that, <laughs> I getting that, man. That I've is seen too enough. much. No. That is too. That's too much for that move. Those movies. You need to lower the price for that one. Hey, think about You're this, right. man. Think, think about this, man. Mm -hmm. Here, I can I can help you. I can help you this with smoking. So, like every pack costs what, like twenty bucks, right? Well, like seven. Oh seven. no! Where where I live? Okay, so yes. seven, right? So if he didn't smoke for three oh, packs, amazing. that'd be twenty one dollars that you can take to the boutique bala sale, fifty percent off sale criterion. You can oh, sure. <laughs> <laughs> well, Tans is always telling me I've got to stop doing like Vincent halls and stuff. He's like, you know, put some money into your equipment. And I was like, yeah, man, but I gotta have it. I don't know if you guys know this. Uh, you know, I got I got Cody Ray to watch that movie, The Amazing Bulk. No. Uh -huh. Well, what the ask about was he's got like he's like not that bad. <laughs> that really wasn't, it really wasn't when I watched it when we did the, that that replay that the watch party. Honestly, I, I, I if he has seen the Wendigo, it made the Incredible uh, Bulk look like a fucking Oscar. I, hey, I, I've, I've hey, seen. I, I I've watched that like, movie and I literally got sick. Just like Echo got sick with Velma. I watched the Bulk and I got it, it, sick. Something it, fierce. Here's, oh, the no. thing about, here's the thing about Wendigo movies. I've seen two or three and they've all been bad. So now I stay away from them. Because I'm convinced well, there's not any good well, Wendigo movies out there. I mean, that's, I mean, you just, you know, there's this, yeah, I mean, I watched the Wendigo and I'm like, oh man, this is some bullshit right here. And then oh, I yeah. watched the Bulk and I'm going there going, you know what? Compared to Wendigo, this is fucking an Oscar winner. I'm, I'm down with this. It's not bad. It, it, it's, I, I don't think oh, it's necessarily the, the effects that make the Wendigo bad. What it's effects? I'm writing. What effects? I know, but it's the writing. <laughs> some of them, they don't even let you really see the... Some of them, you don't really see the, the Wendigo. You might see a little, like, shadow thing. And, like they say, not writing. It's really kind of like you're just watching this movie, and you're just like, where can I find a gun? I need a gun. <laughs> I need a gun and a bullet so I can put myself out of my misery. No, no, just Dude, shoot the was, TV. That, that was. I don't know, movie. man, but if somehow the amazing bull becomes really popular and I start seeing it all over the place, I'm blaming Echo. He's the one that brought forth that abomination into everyone's consciousness. <laughs> you, I like, you I like that. He, he messages me. He's like, hey, could you want to do a cameo in like one of my videos? I'm going to watch the amazing bull. Okay. I still, I still, think, I don't know. I, I still think, I, I still think that we elevated. Uh, I still think that we, as a community, because I'm not taking this bullet by myself, but I think we, as a community, did a very fine job at elevating the mighty Ouija shark into cult status. Oh yeah. <laughs> well, uh, there, there's a there's another type of bad movie. God, with shark movies, it's literally a double edged sword. You come across a good one here and there. And then you get like Ouija Shark, Noah's Shark, Sharkula, Raiders of the Lost Shark. Uh, 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 what else? Is uh, four headed shark, four headed oh. shark attack, five headed no, shark. See, attack. It's, yeah, it's shark literally exorcist. like it's multi headed shark. shark. Exorcist two. And and let me say this because this has to go on to the professor. Who does the multi headed shark movies? <laughs> Only the greatest movie studio of all time. <laughs> <laughs> Wild Eye. <laughs> okay, but look at this. Okay, look at all the different franchises, shark franchises that, uh, that Asylum has. Multi headed, Mega Shark, Megalodon. Am I missing any? Oh, Sharknado. Same Sharknado. Movie, yeah. Rift Track. That's going to be funny. It's Rift Tracks. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's I Mike Nelson and. Uh, I don't know. I've See, seen that movie twice. <laughs> I'm, I'm, really, really, <laughs> I'm, no really, I'm eyeing two of uh, the Severance, Day of the Animals, and Revenge of the Living Dead Girls. I got both I of those. I've, I know I've seen uh, Revenge. I'm going to have to sit there and watch a trailer, get uh, re-familiar with that movie, whether or not I liked it or not. Mm. I know I've seen it. Revenge of the Living Dead Girls is okay. So weren't they fake, it, wasn't they were faking yeah, the was. death or something? Something about bad milk or some shit. I was at a different movie. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, I don't think that's Revenge of the Living Dead Girls, but it might be Day of the Animals. I don't know. Hey, man, Leslie yeah. Nielsen going full rage mode and trying to fight a big ass bear. Sounds all right to me. I would dig that. Going back to metal, we lost a great metal singer, great musical artist. Just recently? Christopher Lee. Oh, so wow. Oh, yeah. Remember it? Didn't, he, didn't he have like a black metal band or something? Yeah. Wasn't this band called the, the, fall, uh, the fall of Usher or some shit like that? Christopher Lee and the House of Usher or something like that? Sounds right. I... Um, He's more operatic with his singing style, isn't it? <laughs> or am I wrong? I, I've never really heard the band, but what I did hear, he sounded very. You, you can find operatic. it all like on YouTube, and he does like some covers. I think of different songs, but I can't remember which songs. Hmm. You know what? It's still the worst. The worst celebrity singer of, of all time, without a doubt. I mean, the worst of the worst. The one that just is, screams, it's just so bad. I mean, beyond bad. I know I mean, who you're gonna say. William Shatner is Rocket Man. Oh, oh. <laughs> I thought we were getting hit with a David Hasselhoff or something. Man. Roseanne. You know, you know what? I would listen to Hasselhoff all day long versus listening to that Shatner song one time. <laughs> oh, I, what about, I what about when, they showed, when they showed him right when he's sitting there and he's he's like he's doing that I, I don't know what was more i don't know what was more weird than the fact that he did the song the way he did it or the fact that people are actually clapping for him afterwards wow. i mean how could you how i mean could you imagine if he tried to do that on a mainstream award show you imagine if ricky gervais came behind that could you imagine what would, there chatner would have died oh, yeah. that night yeah, he would have <laughs> totally chat on him. But there is worse than him, though. There is Gervais. worse than Rocket. him. Man. Rocket. There's worse, though. Man. Remember Roseanne? <laughs> Do you remember Roseanne when she had to, had to sing the national anthem and got the shit booed out of her? Oh, yeah. Remember, uh, do you, you think know, she did that on purpose just to troll people? Yeah. No, I I think she's probably probably a couple cocktails. You know, but you know, the thing with Roseanne is like, okay, so let's say she did troll him, right? But she knew that she was trolling him, okay? So that was her, she was in on the joke. Shatner actually believed that he could actually, you, you know, pull that off. Well, that's <laughs> ego in the case of Shatner. Oh, Jesus, yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm shocked. I'm shocked they got him and his ego on that spaceship. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a good point, man. I mean, I I don't know. I'm I, I'm more worried about the feud Shatner was having with Red Letter Media. I don't know if y'all heard about that, but hey, I Shatner, liked... Shatner's very talented. I mean, he spoke Esperanto in Incubus. That that takes some talent, I I guess. Did you ever oh. hear what uh, what Walter King or whatever the guy that played Chekhov, the original Chekhov, said about him? No, he, he was like he's like he was like he don't, he hates him. I, I okay. thought the guy I thought the guy hates him. He's like I don't want to hear about him. Not even if those news breaks and he's been fucking horses. Damn. It's like, oh. Uh, uh, about the guy really. hated this guy. How, how, how about the fell dog? I would listen to the fell dog before I listen to William Shatner. <laughs> you know, honestly, man, uh, performance wise, I can't really say much, but I kind of liked that Comeback King song. You know, he, he was. Dude, he tries. He, he, he tries. tries. He does. Yeah. I. You know we have fun with the fell dog, but uh, you know, but he's trying. You know, it's just, it's just that you know, it's just, it's when not no talent and no singing voice come together. You know, sure. that's when we create the fell dog. But everyone wants to be a rock well, star, so if they've got yeah, to chew you, in, you, you get these different actors who are like, oh, you know, I should be a singer. Sure, him and um, Polly Shore. But hey, you know, Eddie Murphy, Bruce Willis, and Don Johnson gave us some memorable stuff. Yeah. My girl likes to party, party all the time. All the time. Party yeah. Sam Sandler also released a whole bunch of... Uh, and those are things. great. Those are great, though. Is that oh, God. Too, I, had, I used to have one of those ones. The one that had the song about a, oh, I got a piece of shit, saw a car piece of shit car and at the end the, the, like the people doing the chorus like breaking it down like all the different problems and like that bashing the car and you hear them hey 
Fuck you guys. Uh, Casey, Casey putting out a, a case in for uh, the Hoffs hooked on a feeling cover. Um, what about the how about the video of the Hoff eating the hamburger off the floor? Yo, what's that oh. movie? Uh, <laughs> yeah, he done that. I mean, I don't think he ate it off the floor. Well, oh, yeah, he, I guess. He, he, he was he, wasted. He ate he it was off wasted. the floor. Yeah. Well, he, he wasn't was, eating it like a dog or something. No, you no. Know? Um, he was he was wasted, and his fuck? kids decided to, you know, they wanted they wanted him to see how bad he was. Mm -hmm. So his kids recorded him basically blitzed him so they can show him. Mm -hmm. Like he was eating, he was eating off the floor, man. Oh no. He did yeah, what I'm trying to oh, How God. could you? Uh, I get Kit, Kit must be rolling in his grave, I tell you what. <laughs> I think Kit I think Kit went over and joined uh, Boy, Meets, Boy, Boy Meets World. Have you heard the song <laughs> True Survival he did? No. There's a movie out. Oh, what the fuck is that movie? Kung Kung Fury Fury. Okay. And it's I've been wanting to see it for a while. It looks kind of trippy. And okay. he does this song um called uh, True Survive. The beginning of the music video has him pulling up in this car to these criminals. And he's like, hey, you guys are causing trouble. They put a skateboard under the car, stomp on the car on the skateboard, sends the car flying through the air. He jumps out, does a spin. Does the splits and they get some kicks their asses. Amazing. <laughs> Only the Hoff man. And I've, I've been wanting to see the movie for a while. It's like, like you know, one of those. Which, which Hoff? How many? How many uh, David Hass, David Hasselhoff movies do you own in your collection, Wes? Speaking as a as a baller, how many? How many yeah. uh, Hasselhoffs do you have? And do you do you have I don't, have any. I don't think. Do you, do you have Baywatch? No, sir. No, sir. Yeah. Everybody uh, watched Baywatch, but not for Hasselhoff. I'm gonna, was, I'm gonna blow your long... minds. I, I actually the have David Hasselhoff money. in a Doctor Jekyll and Mister Hyde musical on DVD. Wow! Yeah, straight. That's I'm straight. Musical. That's straight budget baller territory right there. Hell yeah! That's oh, man. interesting, we, man. Am I yeah. Yeah. You know? I, I think I think the professor is looking to take your uh, uh, your baller title away from you, Wes. Oh no! No, well, I couldn't do that. No, no, no! Yeah, I, I bow down to the mighty Ice Lord. No, no, no! <laughs> oh, man. Dude, I'm just a, I'm likely... just a crazy collecting freak that saw David Hasselhoff doing <laughs> Jekyll and Hyde. I'm like, well, I gotta own that. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, it's probably pretty easy as long as as long as you can make it through my threshold. Unscathed, you can have all my movies. I won't. I'll fight for them, but you know, I'm you know, I'm not especially really especially his hard copy of Goose of Milk. He'll fight you to death with his copy of Goose of Milk or Penis Shark yet? Penis Shark yet? No. <laughs> what, 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 wait, Wes, what about what about your best gourd.com compilation? Don't have that. Oh shit. Okay. <laughs> Should I? Yeah, I so. <laughs> My mind, my same mindset when I got that movie where Adam West is the Vampire Slayer. <laughs> uh, he was also in what was it, uh, Zombie Nightmare, and I thought he did all right. I mean, his character was terrible, but you know, gotta love that guy. Yeah, it's just just one of those things. You come across a movie and you're like, what. The hell is this thing? And you got you gotta see for yourself. You gotta buy it and watch it and be like, well, that's the thing I saw. Yeah. Like my son did with Hobo with a shotgun. Apparently he discovered that and he's like, We've got to watch this, Dad. And I was like, Okay. You know, uh, I found that bad. I found that out of the, the Dollar Tree, and it's really good. I yeah. really like the I really like the monologue that he's giving to the to the newborns. I was like, Holy shit, that's a really good monologue. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's true. Well, Rutger Hauer was awesome and still is in my heart. Another which, which, which bad great. guy had the best? Which bad guy mo monologued the best? Bane. Bane. Well, yeah, I mean, I, I was gonna say any James Bond villain because they always they always talked and always let him get out of things. Yeah. Well, Bane sure as hell didn't. I mean, I I suppose it depends on. I mean, no one likes seeing Batman get his you know cowl smashed in, but Bane did it. He had some. He had a little bit of. Uh, 
He was a baller. That's, that's pretty much how they do it in the comic books. He basically breaks Batman down and then breaks his back, kicks his ass. Uh, my internet okay. went wonky. What was the question? Uh, when are you going to get that copy of uh, the uh, Birdemic trilogy? M. Bison. Oh, yeah. Let me just go sell some sperm so I can afford it and, uh, <laughs> and I'll go get it. <laughs> well, it's one that I used to always hear about. They used to advertise. I used to always, you know, they end up following me and I made the mistake of following them back on Twitter. Zombie with a shotgun. Mm. God, I, I, I like they decided to follow me. I'm like, okay, I'll follow them back. Oh god, they advertised the shit out of that movie. It's on Tubi. They must have been a backer or something, but not a whole lot from what I heard. At least not in the United Kingdom. No, no, Professor's just gonna have to give up some of his asylum movies. Never. Hell no. No, <laughs> never, never, never. Well, I thought too, man. I think. Like, See, yeah. my idea is that what uh, you know, the knock on wood. But if I ever pass away, uh, I'm just gonna ask everyone to build like a Viking funeral pyre. You know, put all my uh, DVDs along with me, and then light us up, light us up. <laughs> and don't they send you off in a canoe to burn? They, on they, the no, they put you out in a boat. But the whole thing is, someone's got to aim the arrow. Okay, let's try to hit him good. <laughs> Oh shit! I think I hit him in the nuts when the board arrow. Good thing dead already. <laughs> <laughs> he won't mind. He's dead. He's not gonna feel it. Just in case. Yeah, yeah. Watch it. We'll, we'll do that. You know, someone would do it. Hit him in the nuts. They'll be like, "Hey, it's not gonna bother him. He's already dead. His ghost comes back." Oh, we need to fucking talk. Okay, but <laughs> someone has to play the song "Goodness Gracious, Great Balls of Fire" for that one. <laughs> uh, perfect. I, I I was thinking more uh, along the lines of um, oh, that's a good one. Uh, good song. 99 Red Balloons. Is that Come that, On, that, Eileen? That one? On 99. That, like that, was Dixie, that was Dixie's, Dixie's Midnight Runners. Oh, Safety Dance. That'd be another good song at someone's funeral. <laughs> Safety Dance. I heard someone pulled a good prank. Before they died, they recorded themselves going, It's dark in here! I'm strapped! Let me out! It's dark in here! And they had to set up so when the coffin was roaring, <laughs> all of a sudden that would play. So people would just bust them up at the funeral because they heard this. It's dark in here. No, let me out. Like, oh my God. Prank. That's a good prank. It's a little rough, though, to pull on your, uh, you know, all your attendings, attendees, attendance at your funeral, though, right? I think I mean, it'd be a funny as hell prank. Sure. Some people might not, you know, get it or whatever. Or they. They may not have appreciated, but I, I would love it's to do funny, something yeah. like that. I want my funeral to be just a total, you know, uh, party. anarchic party. Yeah. Party. Yep. No holds barred. That's just that's me right. personally. That's right. Wow, I that's going to make some kids uh, stargazing really interesting, yeah, Lemonia. Well, yeah, well. <laughs> so hey hey i want to be like that birth that that uh that uh the gender reveal you know the one that's over that wildfire i want to have a funeral where you burn my body and it accidentally causes a wildfire <laughs> one last swipe at mankind or the earth echo the bomb bo echo the wildfire night I killer deep red deep blood look at some of these ones i got yeah seen. night killer's cool but Grizzly, oh. I'm trying to remember. Is this Grizzly the one that had the sequel? Oh, this is a different one about the killer bear. Well, it's about a killer bear. Well, there was one that had a sequel and they didn't release it until like years later. But it was that filmed. Was that was Grizzly. They, that yeah, was Grizzly they, they, what was it? They filmed it and it was like years after they finished it, it finally got released. <laughs> but that happens, man. I mean. In some cases, sometimes so at, at the beginning, I think it's you have uh, was it uh, George Clooney, Charlie Sheen, and what was it, Laura Dern, or something at the beginning, young and get killed at the beginning. Matthew, I think Matthew McConaughey was in that too, wasn't he? I can't remember. I just remember really? like they were like it literally like sat on the shelf for years, longer than within the um Texas Chair, the one Texas Chair, the Massacre movie. With Matthew McConaughey, yeah, the other one that man, but this grizzly one sat on the shelf. Part three, 
Yeah, well, I guess Casey confirms here Grizzly 2 is that one, so you were right. Was it Patrick? Well, they got Zombie 4. I gave someone my copy of Zombie 4. And again, Sinful Dwarf. Well, there's a few movies here I'm interested in. What's the what's the other name for Zombie 4? Um, is it the... What was not, it? not Zombie 5. No, uh, I don't know. In some uh, cases, it might be. Uh, uh, zombie... <laughs> well, actually, there is... There is a zombie five, but when you look it up, text to the of uh, the original zombie line, I think there's only like three, and I think that's Dawn of the Dead, Zombie Flesh Eaters, and one other. And then when you when you look it up, there's all these different countries and regions. So like there's Death Bird. Oh, yeah, Jerome Jerome from Horrible <laughs> Reviews had a whole like like a uh, after uh, death. It's chart. called it's called after death. Okay. Which one's uh, the the Bruno Matai zombie one? Which one is that? Number three? The best one. Uh, is... The one that Felucci told him he didn't want his name still attached to it. Because there's, uh... you know, there's a debate about what happened. One story is that he got upset and he wasn't, you know, there was something going on between him and, and Matai, and he basically said, fuck it. And he left. And they finished, they shot a whole bunch of different stuff. So it's like hard to tell what's his. And what's Matthias? Yet Matthias said before he died, he had health problems. So okay. it's kind of like two stories to why he left. But I'm going to have to go with uh, him being mad at him because the fact that he said, remove my name from it. Yet, like my copy of it, because they did release it eventually, it still says Matai on it. I mean, it has Felucci's name on it. I have now it somewhere. That's Zombie 3? Yeah. Because because they do they still it was, it's like when I got it, it says like the Felucci collection, but like oh. it's hard, it's hard you have to still probably look, really watch really close to figure out what's Felucci's and what's not his. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But you want to talk about going back to music, the song for After Death Zombie Four screams eighties. Oh yeah, I've got to find it for you, West City to you, West. It screams eighties. <laughs> Was it like hair metal or that hair, like you know, metal and shit, the like glam rock kind of stuff they had going that was, yeah. you know, of, all like poppy course. sounding that just again, it screams 80s, <laughs> it just comes right out and screams it. I get that, oh, yeah, you comes get out, a lot of that yeah. comes out, smacks you in the face, kicks you in the head, says 80s, and then walks away. <laughs> Because let's face it, some Boy. of the music, and, and you're going, you're going with music, you know, and with. Horror movies got some of the music. Yeah, you got a point. Some of it's the score, some of it's the soundtrack itself, like those, you know, the contribution tracks or whatever the bands have, you know, let them license to put on their, you know, CD or whatever their soundtrack. I don't know, man. Uh, <laughs> I can't really think of an example, but well, look at some of the Friday Thirteenth one. Mm hmm. Just look at him. That's all you need to do. I mean, like, and there's that that one song in the um the fifth movie where she's all like, "Oh, Violet, dancing. yeah." Hmm. And you ever seen the uh, the suppose they had a sense of her death scene or something? Yeah. 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 I, I I I saw. I heard uh what they were the original how the, the original kill was supposed to go, and I was like, yeah, that's not gonna fly. Right in the oh. baby maker. <laughs> Shit. Forget yeah. about you know. Forget about you know. Dick cutting. It was going to be a machete into the um, <laughs> the baby um, exit button hole. <laughs> oh, that's a nasty place to store your machete. Damn. So, I think, so, so now I think now all you see is it just kind of goes. Oh, you see the blood, but I, did they actually shoot that? No, that it was it was planned, but everyone was like, "No, no, that that's a bit too much. That's gonna get us in trouble." Yeah, <laughs> and I think I think uh, it, he gets her in the stomach, or yeah. I'm I'll, or, I, yeah. Mm. I think it's one of those ones where, like, you know, they just show her face. You know, they don't really show you where they get stabbed. It's kind of close up with the face. Yeah, but they find a body later on, so it is a little bloody in the stomach area. And the blood goes down, so. Oh, Part five kidding. gets gets shed a, a lot on because you know it's not Jason, but it has some really good kills. And and 
it has a really good pair of boobies with that uh, Voorhees lady. So, uh, big fan. Big fan of that. Mm -hmm. The one that gets the... <laughs> The one that gets the garden, yes, the one garden, yeah, gets the garden shears into the eyes. Mm. <laughs> He's not the world's amazing tatas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, in all fairness, damn, those are nice. Those are Hell yeah! Lovely. <laughs> but we can't blame. We can't call Jason being a dick for killing the chick with the nice tits. We have to. We can blame the imposter. He doesn't discriminate, you know. He kills all kinds of titties. But I right? think, I, mean, I think even, I think even Jason would have been like, "Damn, those are nice. I can't do it." <laughs> Could Maybe be, would that be a would that be a sight if that happened in a horror movie? Come out there and see a girl topless, and and the guy goes, "No, nah, okay. I can't do that. I, I know. Let me, let, me, <laughs> let me go hack up another guy in a wheelchair." Right. I can't rob the world of those titties. I'm going to move on. Uh, yeah. <laughs> the, see, see, that would be the. That would be the professor if he if he was the slasher in the movie. He'd be like, oh, damn. The professor, the professor, it. the professor would be the guy in, in the in the remake of Friday the Thirteenth. Your 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 tatas are spectacular. <laughs> it, it basically, it would be if you wanted to not be killed by the professor, have big tatas. I'll be a goth chick with big tatas, and you're safe. Pretty meanwhile, much. meanwhile, right, the hip hop girl, yeah. the hip hop girl with the A cup is going. Oh, I'm fucked. <laughs> <laughs> I, I would pa I'd pass on killing a beautiful big titty goth girl. So, but it's I think it's still no a doubt. cool it's it's still a cool death scene. Well, sure. Yeah. You, do you guys go ahead. Go ahead man. No, 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 no. I was just gonna say something else, but no, no. Go ahead. I think you beat me to it. I think I <laughs> go right ahead, man. Oh, okay. Well, I was gonna say I think that's that's why I like part four the best. Part four, uh, the final chapter is my all-time favorite of the Fridays because okay. it has, I think it has the good characters, but 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 it also has the most amount of boobies. So uh, oh. big fan of that too. Makes doesn't sense. It, it, doesn't it also have an embarrassing dance scene in it? You mean an awesome dance scene? Yeah, man. It was um um Crispin Glover. The one yeah, guy's but, like, but, but, but it was one thing about Kristen Glover's character, though. Yeah, he got killed, but at least he got, at least he went out with a smile. Oh, yeah. And yeah. not only that, the one guy kept taunting, going, You got a limp dick, you know, you're going to be a virgin and all this shit. And the other guy can't get no action because, the you know, he gets left in the cold. Meanwhile, Kristen Glover's like, Guess what? Here's our panties. So who's a limp dick now? Yeah. So we got that bonus of sticking it to the guy by saying, hey, I ain't no limp dick, motherfucker. <laughs> yeah, Dad, man, it's kind of like me. Ted, where's the corkscrew? <laughs> <laughs> also, best banana scene ever in a horror movie. <laughs> the, the one girl, when she gets a throat cut, she was eating a banana. You can see her, and the banana just crushes the banana in her hand. <laughs> Good use of banana prop. Very and good. it stars Corey Feldman. See, it all comes back. Oh, yeah, bones, the the circle. yeah, he had the uh, the uh, the little like he'd have like a, a book and he'd be like, Oh, let me put it in my computer. <laughs> now, the fell dog bones makes a return to quote the film we're talking about. Put that in your little computer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, how, how many oh, movies did you get on the sales? That's that's why you popped out, right? You went and, and bought a couple of sales. Uh -huh. You know, uh -huh. he did. That was the rumor. The rumor. We were, we'd true. love to have you back up, man. We're 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 not talking uh, exclusively yeah. rock and roll death. Hey, so hey I up. I got that copy of uh, Dead and Breakfast. If you've seen that movie, then you know it has that really cool song in it. We're coming to kill you. We're coming to kill you. We're coming to kill you. Oh. And in that scene where like the, the hiding from the like the, these possessed zombies, uh -huh. and he's like, they're like, what are they doing? The one guy's like, I, I think they're doing a musical number. <laughs> if you haven't seen Dead and Breakfast, it's, it's a cool little movie, but that scene, when like, he does the whole, I think they're doing a music number. And taking it back to to, to music, uh, I really like uh, all those Italian movies with Goblin. The mm -hmm. Goblin soundtrack all look good. 
They're oh, awesome. Like I have Argento a, had so many Goblin soundtracks. Like, yeah, I have a, a cover type one. I don't know if it's the original Goblin or someone do covering the Goblin songs for uh, Dawn of the Dead. Hmm. Unfortunately, it's one song that's not on it because it wasn't Goblin. What's that? Because that wasn't them. That was them all. You know, they originally, um, I think that the European release of uh, Martin um, had a Goblin soundtrack to it, too. But uh, it's always nice to know. But uh, the original they... soundtrack to Martin was pretty good. Just to give uh, a shout out to Romero there. But Romero. Hey, I'm going to pale out here because I'm going to get myself uh, some Din Din before I have to hit the hay. Yeah, but yeah, also, right. thank you for they, coming, Pat. And they did multiple movies. Care, too. Mighty Take care of my, my budget, Bala, brother. Hey, it's all my uh, Lamonio, hey, it's yes, I have. Me. I have heard of them. Budget thank Bala, you. buddy. I've, right. I've, I've heard, uh, yeah, Lamonio, hey, I've heard okay. of them, and I like them. Have a good night, Pat. Oh, shit, I missed him before he... Good guy there. Patrick's the man. Check Why him out. He, Check uh, out yeah. the channel. Have Cheetah, Will View. Okay, see, they did Suspiria, Martin, Z uh, Zombie, which Star of the Dead. They did that movie, Patrick. Fuck that movie. Beyond the Darkness, Contamination, Mount St. Helen, Tanope, Hell of the Living Dead, uh, Pneumonia, The Church, oh, and Sleepless. Okay. So, well, they were pretty. Now, what's this Necrogoblicon? Oh, you never heard them? Is, no. They're, they're, they're all this band. I, I, I was going to send you a link for that song from after, uh, for that movie was on before. I got to send you the cover of, um, they did uh, one of the, um, they have this band, they're like a metal band type kind of deal. And the mascot is this guy called, he's a goblin, and he's, he's pretty cool. He, he appears in some of the music videos. I got to send you a link for some of the music videos. I think you will like them, Wes. They're actually pretty cool. Cool, yeah. Why not, man? They have one where this guy, like, the, he, like, he's, like, has this thing okay. for his girl that he works with. um, And he's, like, <laughs> finds out that basically Thanks this so other guy has, this, she gets, like, sexually assaulted by this guy. And so the, the goblin guy shows up and not only kills him, but he's, like, in such a blood rage. She kills her, too. So pretty cool wow. band. Oh, like his one, there's one where he's bowling and he's got no friends. He's all alone. There's people are mocking him and he goes to get mad at them and he goes to throw a bowling ball at them. They dodge it. This little old lady's there with a husband and she just hits him in the head. He hits her in the head and obliterates her head. Wow. It's a pretty <laughs> cool. <laughs> That's a hard thing to do, from what I understand, you know, just from a physics standpoint, but I think you might like the bones. I mean, uh, Wes, I think you might like them. Oh, I'm gonna have to write down the names. I, now I want to look them up. I think they do have. Yeah, they have a YouTube channel of the same name. Do the awesome. The, the, the it's easy to tell it's the channel because it has a picture of the guy oh. in his whole get up. They even have a song called Bones. <laughs> Oh yeah, well yeah. As I said before, my first uh, first romp into Alice in Chains was them bones. So once again, it comes all full circle, man. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna send you a link for the music, but I think it's No One Survives. Cool. Yeah, I think that's the one uh, Lamonia was talking about. Yeah, I think you'll you'll like it. It's pretty cool. And here we go. Marlins. <laughs> oh yeah. There we go. My Boglin brother Bones. Thank you. Boglins. But yeah, they're pretty cool. And, and I think of uh, damn nuts. <laughs> the, 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 the goblin guy even was hosting a little talk show too. They had the YouTube channel. But yeah, I said I think I like them West. And if you check them out too, Professor, I think you might like them too. They're actually pretty cool. <laughs> I'll check them out for sure. I'll send it to you. Uh, yeah. link. I'll send you the link to Professor, so you can check him out. All right, thanks, buddy. Very. I cool. think uh, it's like because 
you go sometimes if you look up music on YouTube, you'll find you're not just like you know Sepultura and all these bands you might know. You'll find stuff like Necro Goblin, uh, different like acts. Like I looked up Clowns one time and I found, I think that's how I found them. I don't know why <laughs> it's not really Clowns. <laughs> that's how you but, found the band Goblin. You mean? Look at album, yeah, just randomly look it up and like you get these different suggestions. Like oh, you know, like you you get to watch a video. They're like, hey, check this out. You might like it. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'll check this out. And like, they're pretty cool. Yeah, would you like a link, Lamonia? Or Limonia? And Bones just putting the pressure on. <laughs> I love it when people are <laughs> they're in the chat. They're like, you go up. No, you go up. <laughs> Everyone come up. I promise I won't bite. Well, maybe yeah. just well, we we can, you do. Oh. we can keep we can keep we can keep. Hey, we can keep Professor from biting. It's very easy to keep Professor from biting. How do you do it? Uh, no more Vira if he bites. Oh, that, no, that, no, 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 <laughs> no! Come on, man! No, that shit ain't fair. <laughs> well, it's, better than, it's better than that. You Ball want that, gag. professor? You want that oh, professor? No. <laughs> Those well, things are it, well, really well, 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 well. Is the ball shaped like a titty? Because I, I might go over that. <laughs> and now we're in business. Find one, y'all. Not today. Maybe on the next move. Just look under Wes's bed. Oh. You'll find it. Look under Wes's bed. You'll find it. It'll be right next to his bad dragons. Yeah. <laughs> My stuffed dragon collection, you mean? <laughs> oh, man. Oh, you just gave it away, man. I got a bunch of them bad dragons. Wait. You're talking about dildos, right? Yeah, we know about your bad dragon collection. Oh, pshaw. Good God. Terrible thing to tell the world. It, it, I heard that quit. echo was coming up Tuesday. Oh yeah, was Lamonia got a thing for echo? Is that the word on the streets? Does anybody need an exam? Oh, what? damn! What are you? What are you going to examine it with that? Hey, I know this is for making mixed drinks, but I'm sure I can do some exams. I can scoop some stuff out. Ew! <laughs> it's even got a, it's even got a plug. <laughs> I should mount it on my car. Unfortunately, I think the cat destroyed the um, the suction cup thing on it. <laughs> They're asking where's the the huge oh. toe. Uh, have you ever watched some of these um, <laughs> mechanical mishaps? I was watching no. this one. This guy, they were uh, they had this thing where they have these uh, wheel. They put the car on it. It's got these little like track wheels that you know you can spin the car the wheels on. This guy was trying to clean it, and he got sucked under the wheel of a car. Oh. And it must have been brutal, because all of a sudden they blurred the image. Ew, and me, nasty. and me, I'm go, and me, I'm going, I just want to see the gore. I want to see what fucked his <laughs> arm up. And no kidding. That, that's some well, thousand ways to die shit right there. Right, yeah, it is. Wow. That's <laughs> my yeah, favorite one. Like, there's one that they, they, they were doing low rider, so you had the low riders going boom, it's hopping, 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 and all of a sudden, you just see the front end that goes up, 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 and then on, on, his, on his top. Oh my god, turned out they figured out they set it up because they wanted to do that to create a moment. Because, well, like, you can look at the little bars they had in the back, it was meant to make it so the car would go straight up. Oh, and so wow. Some people, some people do that. That shows is like, hey, the create a moment. We don't care. We spent, you know, and that's a lot of money to do a low rider. Yeah. <laughs> Good God. I want a low rider wow. horror movie. Ooh, a new Christine movie. The girl low rider. I'm surprised <laughs> they haven't tapped into that. I mean, well, isn't there isn't there a ripoff called The Car? Uh, so. Doesn't The Car predate Christine, though? Does it? Possibly. Oh, yeah. hmm. 
Couldn't tell you myself, but Echo's doing the research for us okay. right now. The car is 1977. Oh. Yes, because Chris mm -hmm. is 1983. Holy shit, mind blown. <laughs> but, but let's see where the book was written, though. So when was the book written? Oh, Hold on, y'all. I'm 80, going 80, to 83. Back. Yeah. 83. Yeah. So, yeah, it's 83, Professor. Big time, Oh, Wes. shit. The coffee oh. people came after Wes. <laughs> well, it was sitting after him or you. And oh, I think they'd have yeah. trouble getting across the border. Wes, sick the coyotes at the coffee people. Quick. Hey, man, that burrito yesterday gave me so much gas, Professor. I could have flown from Washington State to Mexico with the gas it gave me. <laughs> <laughs> Was it a bean burrito? Uh, bean Carnitana. and asada. Bean and asada. Huh? So, it, except you know what would happen? I would have landed at your place, and all of a sudden, there comes the Mexican government with the military. Oh, why are you letting lethal weapons? Half our country is gone. Look at all the dead people you have caused, senor. <laughs> but I now, to do it. Uh, did it have guacamole? Because beans and guacamole is a dangerous combination. It was uh, uh, sada with beans uh -huh. Uh -huh. and both regular salsa and verde. I love, I love my chili verde, salsa verde, whatever you want to call it. I love yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. So and 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 you know had to have the the, the strata. So oh oh god, <laughs> even thinking about it, twenty five hours, over twenty five hours later. Oh god, the pain. And then we <laughs> ran to a friend. You're trying to be happy to see a friend, but you're just sitting there like. Oh God! God, take me now. It was like when when you were younger, you could eat that shit. Then you get home and when no one's looking, you go, "Oh God, what was I thinking?" Yeah, the only time I've had a an issue with a burrito is is because it had a combination of of uh, beans, carne asada, and guacamole. So that's like I don't know the combination of beans and guacamole just didn't didn't sit right. They didn't. Those coffee people didn't uh, do too much to you, did they, Wes? No, they just wanted us to be nice. I said, "Yeah, no problem, man." Okay, that works. You should just send them to the professor. They can go visit. They can go visit professor now. I'm no. surprised they made it so far so quick. Well, oh, we know they got, they got agents in every state and every country. For all we know, well, if they come after me, yeah. I got a robot and a and a Tommy Wesitos, you know, ready to greet them. That's a good well, part. Let, let point, me call. Let, let me message them. Tell them to just play the amazing bulk when they show up. That should take <laughs> out the robot. That was to take out the robot. Instant death. <laughs> Don't glitch out. And with, with the zombie, uh, all the times you've hit on other big chitty uh, goth girls, I hope she didn't find out. <laughs> hey, 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 hey. She'd be uh, like, "Whoa, you want to go back to hell? Do you?" Well, well, Citos and I have a what, what's that shit? Will Smith says uh, an, an open marriage. So it's it's good. Sure. It's good. <laughs> oh, so now we're, now we're going to see uh, a new award show with professor's going to show up and spit smack somebody. Keep my wife's name out of your mouth. <laughs> Keep my wife's name out of your fucking mouth. <laughs> Damn. Surf and surf sandwich. I'm like, ooh, double cheeseburger with a filet of fish. <laughs> I'm down for that. Oh, man. You're making my tummy growl. Good shit. Now we're gonna get everybody's gonna get hungry and be pissed at us. Those guys were gonna stop talking about food. I hate those guys. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know, man. I think that anyone still left in the chat will tolerate anything that we want. Well, to here's what they're not the gonna most, tolerate. Right? Do you guys like tuna salad? I do. I like do I you? like making my own tuna salad. I don't buy tuna salad from do, other do, places. Do you like do you like jello? There's always room for jello. <laughs> there, somebody's watching some of this video where they got this, found this recipe for tuna okay. salad jello. You make your tuna salad, you make your jello, and you mix everything together and you let it sit. No, nope. not me, bro. I even, the, yeah, I know the thought of it is just like <laughs> disgusting. Yeah, <laughs> oh, well, I you're gonna probably get disgusted by this, but I love egg salad. Oh, yeah, deviled eggs. Bro. Dev, deviled eggs. The bomb, yeah, love some deviled eggs. Well, I think the professor got quiet, so he's probably like, I can make that. that. That sounds good. 
<laughs> tuna salad jello. Tuna topic or tuna. And I had to get reminded by my mom that I ruined the Subway's tacos. Uh, I mean, the uh, uh, the tuna sandwich, a sub that Subway's has. I got reminded that I ruined it for her because I told her about the people who um, sent some of the tuna out to be DNA tested, and it came back that it wasn't tuna. Hello. Oh yeah. Hello. Which, I by the way, I, I still want to know who the fuck sent oh. tuna out, tuna salad out to be DNA tested. What kind of person does that? Well, it happens, man. Like, you know, I know that there is a particular, like, service that runs a site that you can, like, send out your drugs to be tested. Mm. And Well, see, that's, that's why but, I only consume the canned stuff. Uh, you, you get yeah. tuna and dolphin, so you get it's brain food. You know, I, I got to say something here, Wes. I got to say something here. I'm looking at Professor. It says, King of the Goss Chicks. And oh, I'm yes. King of the Naughty Nuns. What are you the king of, Wes? You need to be the king of something. I'm the king of, um, what's that one song? I'm the king of good intentions or whatever. Or okay, that that works. What, that works. Uh, or the the key the king of wishful thinking. Okay, that works. That works. That works. I don't I don't know, man. I don't really preside over anything anymore. As as the ice lord, I I kind of live in a. Cave, there you go. Oh, that's a, Bones. Bones has one for Frozen you. River. Oh yeah. What's it? oh the <laughs> the king of Iceland? Yeah. Well, I once was called Doctor Dump during the Guso Milk. Uh, <laughs> you three. ain't gonna ever live that down. You know that? I don't wanna. I kind of like it. Although I know I've told a lot of people uh, that have done Guso again, Milk videos, but I know I, I've told the story a thousand times, but it really did happen with. You know, was it what, two thousand was it Halloween two thousand twenty two? Was it? Yeah. <laughs> With me and Pat in the chat watching him giving up this best play by play ever, we're messaging <laughs> each other on, on Instagram. Holy shit! <laughs> we didn't have a lot of people in the chat that night, but well, there were probably, somehow people that you have probably thought. did. You probably did. They were probably too busy to sit there like. Either they're going, "Oh my god!" They're going. Oh my god, oh yeah. <laughs> Turn oh, people oh, on oh, to oh. it, I guess. Wow. Well, like I was saying before, like I you know, I don't like to watch it. It's a challenge, really. I mean, it don't get me hot or anything. I mean, come on, you know. What do people think? <laughs> oh yeah, I remember that and I don't know. I wasn't and, showing the film. You no, mainly heard it, but I did describe it in detail as best I could. She just popped in there somewhere toward the beginning, and I was like, oh, shit. <laughs> oh, no. And, and of course, oh, now May Ann, of course, now May Ann's like, I would never click on any link with West Sins. <laughs> what movie was that? It was some, one of the ones you were right, doing, and she, she just came back with, I'd never click on another link he's <laughs> it could have been anything from the watch alongs 31 days. There was a lot of really weird, fucked up movies on that time, at that time. <laughs> like Bad oh Biology. That was messed up. Yeah. <laughs> Is that what Bones says here? Uh, okay, I was watching a video on. Um... Oh, no. I was, I, oh. I was watching. I watched a video on Ghostbuster ripoffs in Japan. Yeah. They made a they made a Ghostbuster rip off rip off called uh, High School Ghostbusters. I really would love to see this movie. Mm. They hired uh, the the J A V the Japanese adult actors for the porn, but it's not porn. Huh. It's softcore basically, and the whole plot is that there's these ghosts that were all horny, and are possessing the girls and the teachers at school and making them have sex. Are turning the penis monsters and attacking them. Wow! And to fight them, they use a dust. They use vacuum cleaners to catch them. <laughs> and so now I'm like, I kind of want to see that shit. <laughs> it's like it yeah, sounds I'm just so... corny enough for. <laughs> but when they go, they go. When they go, they got JAV actors. Oh, this Japanese adult video. So I mean, it's going to be hardcore. We're going to be a little bit something to go, but you don't see anything like that. Okay. Wow. So it's... Jeez. 
I mean, uh, I mean, I've heard. I haven't personally seen this, but I've heard from other people uh, watching uh, Japanese uh, porn that even uh, you know straight up porn, it kind of like it, it gets censored. You can't actually show the. Uh, I mean, it's perfectly okay no, to show tentacle you, porn, but you can't show the actual you can't, penetration you can't part. Show, no, it's you can't show um, a pussy. that area of uh, a penis. You can't show those. Uh, even a penis? And, yeah, they, uh, they've done, like, nude things where, like, they either, on uh, the talk shows, they either put a um, a towel or something over there in the area, or uh -huh. it's all, what do they call it? Um, not blurring it out. Um, they pixelate it. Yeah. That area out, and they act like sex is torture because apparently it's supposed to make it look like it's they're not enjoying it. Mm -hmm. Wow! Well, sure I mean, if the stereotype of the little wee wee is true, like you know, it's probably not enjoyable. A what? I well, they're acting like it hurts, wee -wee. Professor. Yeah, I've seen. I've, 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 I, I, no, I haven't seen it. I, I've heard about it. I've heard about. It. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But what gets me? Yeah. Okay, um, it's when you got it. Okay. You know, when they do anime or any kind of animation, they got to, you know, do all these sounds, right? Sure. Oh, you yeah. got to scream. Act like you hurt. Act, got to make a kissing sound effect. Okay, you're going to be doing an animated sex scenes. Do the sounds. Yeah. The sound effect of giving a, a BJ or a basically, you know, like you're getting off. Can you imagine yeah, being sitting be. there, being yeah. the guy in the sound engineer? And we go, okay. Um, I don't think she's doing a good enough job sounding like she's enjoying herself. <laughs> <laughs> and they're all wet and gooey. I mean, uh, so oh, I... Oh, they, they, they gotta get that sound. They gotta get that sound effect. They gotta get all that, that sound effect. That sound effect in there, too. <laughs> Which means, okay, here's the thing. is if Someone's gotta make all these sound effects. And there, mm -hmm. there was a movie about that. Oh, God. About a guy that went around uh, recording things for sound effects for movies. Oh, what was the new? Because they ended up like recording a murder or something. Blowout. Oh, there you go. Mm. I was on the tip of my tongue, but I didn't. It's all squishy. Isn't that from uh, <laughs> that one song, the super, or that one movie, The Super, with Rand Wilson and um, I? I can't remember the lady's name or the man who is. She's now a man. But that, that, that's a job for you, Wes. Go oh. on out, uh, recording odd sounds for these movies. I would love to do that. In fact, that's an excellent idea. Okay, I want to get need, into voice we, acting, though. We're going to have this sexy. We need you to get the sound of penetration and, you know, <coughs> like, uh, how am I going to do that? Well, here's some jello. Here's my fist. Yeah. <laughs> that's right. Butters. Go butters to Paris Hilton. You, it's all squishy. Oh, okay. Well, she should be. Oh god, I'm having a flashback. I think I've told a little bit of the story before. This is years ago when I lived in Seattle. Uh, I had some friends that were in the radio club at high school, and we some of the girls we knew were doing a late shift, mm -hmm. so we decided to prank them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We put a garbage can in front of the door and we're banging on it, and they wouldn't answer the door. Okay. My best friend at the time, love him dearly, was three of us are walking away. Me and this one guy named Zach are walking away. We're like, how are we going to do this without warning? Oh, my best friend grabs the garbage can above his head, throws it down this hill, hits the door, and we're running to hide. <laughs> and one of them opens the door, and you hear this, ew, it smells so bad, or something like that. <laughs> and we all. Me and Zach, we're standing there, like, looking at our friend, my best friend, Charlie, like, what the fuck did you just do? But when she <laughs> said that, all of a sudden, we're just sitting there, like, uh, <laughs> like, I oh, bet. my God, we just <laughs> not want to get caught. Oh, but God. God damn him. He did, without warning, like I said, he just grabs it and just, boom. It's, a, like, a, in, inspiration from the divine or something, like, or who knows, but. I, the, I bad I, choices made easy. I, I wish I had a picture of, of, of I wish I had a picture of Zach because his eyes went wide, and I'm pretty sure since he was looking at me, my eyes also probably went wide. Like, 
<laughs> well, see, that's the that's the great thing about growing up in the age that we did because no one had cell phones and no one could record all the crazy shit we did. Well, actually, yeah, that, that's they, true. when you look and you go back in the nineties, they did. They just really did. They really, they just had those old flip up ones, but they really didn't have cameras. Or if they did, they really weren't that good. No. Yeah, I, I don't remember, but uh, I didn't have a phone like all the kids do today. But uh, but wait a minute, wait a minute. A while for them. The, the Game Boy, the, the Game yeah, Boy had a camera. For Dan. Yes, that's what I was gonna Hello. say. The only camera I ever came across was the one in the Game Boy and with the little printer thing. <laughs> How you doing, Mister Dan? Mister Dan, for stopping out. Yeah, Dan the man. Oh, Mr. Dan, had, uh, before you started your your live, Mr. Dan was uh, on a uh, on a stream with a uh, horror man. It was really good. They were talking. Oh no shit! And he's got the Hot Wheels thing going. So by yeah, the way, yeah. being Bigfoot, That's Mecha Shark cool. for the Asylum guy. No, 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 no. Sasquatch, <laughs> Sasquatch, all the way, Professor. Mecha Shark. Well, well, okay. What if there was a Chupacabra one? Would you go for that? No, uh, stay staying with the sharks. Also, oh, you're not gonna go with Mexican pride. Oh goddamn man! Hey, I'm showing some Washington State pride, man. Well, then again, I'd be stuck in the middle. Fuck, do I go stuck for the, the middle, state, or do I go for the chupacabra? God damn it! Mm, the choices in life are impossible. Yeah, he's going for the asylum, the ass asylum. Have you? Speaking of asylum, have either of you guys seen the, the what was it, King of the Ants? Yeah, it doesn't ring a bell. The name kind of. I think it was an trying... asylum. Uh, what year was that? Oh, it was one of the earlier ones, at least. Um, I know that Dave went. Dave went. The guy from Cheers. The he... from, from two thousand and three. I think so. No, I, I haven't seen that one. It's not bad. I mean, not too bad. I can't really remember what happens, but there's some fella that gets beaten several times by. Does it got that weird cover? Employer. Does it got that weird cover? With no, the guy's got no face. It's all yep. skin and ants. Yeah. I. That's a sign. Damn. Yeah, that's was. A that's the thing about the asylum. Some of their early movies. They actually uh, tried to show a, a little bit of effort, mm -hmm. and then, but whenever I buy a new asylum movie, and uh, they always start with all the trailers, and, and there's like ten trailers before the feature, and I'm like, "Holy shit, Asylum! <laughs> How many movies did you make?" Yeah, shameless self promotion there. Damn. Well, they're the, they're, they're the king of mockbusters. Yeah, sure, yeah. Sure. Pat, uh, Pat has one that I've been trying to look for. I've seen it, and I'm trying to look for a copy. It's called Bound, not the Jennifer Tilly Bound, but it stars uh, Charisma from Angel, and she so shows her uh, her assets, and I'm a big fan of that. Um, I haven't been able to find a copy of that. She showed her assets. <laughs> I thought she was all like religious and shit. Uh, no, yeah, Jim, that Jim, Jim watched the Monster Mash one, which I see the trailer for it, and I'm sorry, the guy who plays Dracula in it, he's just this tall, skinny guy who just really. Trying to do a Bella Lugosi impersonation, I swear. Yeah, mm. I saw his review. It, it's it's the build. The guy's physical build kind of made it think uh, he doesn't. Maybe he's maybe he's good, but look at this tall, lanky look. Well, was he too buff? Is that what you're saying? Or no, he's tall. He's enough. tall and skinny. He looks really well, tall and skinny. Maybe they were going for a, like. Yeah, maybe they were going for a Nosferatu vibe. Yeah, yeah. but it's more Could like like where he's got like the slick back hair and. He's trying to sound like you know Bella Lugosi. So, Monster. But what got me is I had heard they weren't going to be doing uh, physical media no more. But all of a sudden we were getting physical media from them. So, yeah, it's yeah lame. Jim, Jim mentioned that on his review that uh, he didn't think that was going to get a physical media release. Yeah, I got to tell I mean, you, man, when Mike Patton did not release a physical copy of Dead Cross Two, I was broken inside it's it the, just, the i don't like away. that stuff man it's not going away from it and stuff it's just disappointing yeah, i i i went right. in, I, I went into best buy again the other day because i had to look for my mom looked for a power cord an extra power cord for a whole uh, laptop and i had to go to the bathroom and i go right by where the movies used to be and it's so so sad yeah i bet 
Just, I, uh, yeah, don't just look at how, how long we had to wait before Prey got a physical release. And right. I, ne I needed Prey because I have all I have all the Alien movies, I have all the Predator movies, and I needed Prey real bad to complete it until sure. they make another until they make another one. Which oh wait a minute, that's right, they have another Alien once, and then I thought they better physically uh, release that shit because I'm mm -hmm. collecting those movies. I have I have all the ones they've currently made. So they better their ass better release that because I'll be pissed. I like yeah. it when physical uh, physical media gets released on popular demand. You know, it's it has to be you know a sign for these folks. Well, right? here's the thing: I haven't when I talked about those movies I found at St. Jack's, there was two um, wild eyes there. There was a Christmas one, and after Echo Claws, I don't do Christmas movies, no horror movies, no more. <laughs> It just doesn't work for you, huh? It's all fucking bad. <laughs> <laughs> what? And well, I'm sorry, well. Professor. I don't recall any asylum. Yeah, uh, yeah, that's a, that's a, what I was saying uh, in uh, the Horror Man stream. It says it's kind of hard to come by. Or was it Pat? Because I also joined well, Pat's. Well, I don't remember well, the, what the, 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 said. Here's the truth. After I found those two wild eyes, mm -hmm. I was looking for other wild eyes. So I really wasn't looking for something. I'm sure if I went back and looked, maybe I'll find some asylum. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah, that's but why I'm, I'm really happy. I, I found... I, I still have to record the video to that, but I, I found four asylums uh, this oh, time around. So really which happy ones? about that. Mm. Which ones? Uh, I think I already told you. I found uh, I Am Omega. I found uh, Tomb Invader. I found uh, Planet Dune. And I found Sunday School Musical. An asylum mm -hmm. religious movie. So <laughs> uh, I, I have a problem with Tomb Invader. Do you know the about the uh, soft core or whatever uh, Tomb Raider uh, parody? Uh, no. Mm -hmm. I think it's w Room Raider. <laughs> <laughs> and so yeah, it sounds a little close to that. So it kind of sounds like forced entry or something. Yeah, I was familiar with that old porno. That yeah, movie? I also found I also found an ITN one, and I I I recorded that one, and I mentioned you in the video that I found a an ITN one called uh, Leprechaun Revenge. Hmm. Wait a minute, is that the one I heard that's really bad? <laughs> it looks pretty bad. <laughs> and I did find a copy of uh, the ITN movie Nightmare Shark that I uh, I said I needed to strike down a copy, and I found it. Uh, I, I, ITN, uh, yeah, does like the sharks. I think it's. I think Asylum likes the sharks. I'm sure. I know that. Um, I believe Wide Eyes released some. I think it yeah. is because the money makers. So sure, sure. We're gonna, we see a lot. Everybody I'm, wants to see a shark, you know. I mean, or jump the shark, so to speak. Yeah, and unfortunately, some of them. I mean, fuck. it's just. <laughs> Good one, Mississippi, oh, thanks, yeah. Man. Hey, Mississippi, um, Thank you, Professor. Mississippi shark attack was Mississippi River sharks was. So they come up from the Gulf, basically. They, you yeah. know, yeah, but it follows some of the, the the tropes. Okay, there's this threat, and the mayor doesn't want to close the water because you know there's even though they're in danger, he's like, I oh, will lose money. It's also media, mm. doesn't that? Yeah, yeah, a little bit, a little bit. It's, and then you have, it's a plot from Grizzly. That's why it sounds familiar. It's, it's, <laughs> Jaws, it's also Jaws, because remember, the mayor didn't want to close it. Of course, in the book, we know why he doesn't want to close it, because if you've ever read the book, it's because he had, what was his wife had cancer, and he couldn't afford a treatment until the mafia came by. It's like, hey, we'll pay oh. for it. You just got to gotta give us, you know, a little kickback to help us use, you know, Amity Island or whatever to kind of, you know, money, help us laundry money or whatever. Yeah, so he couldn't uh, close it. Yeah, otherwise, Dan, you know, Planet Dune is pretty good. Is it, so that's basically a Dune ripoff. Uh, maybe just a little bit. It's more. It actually plays more <laughs> like Tremors. Uh, it's a, a combination between Dune and Tremors because the the main thing they have to run is, is from the giant worm. So, but here's a question, <laughs> Wes. Do you have any wild uh, any uh, asylum? Huh. I don't honestly I don't know. I don't think so. 
If I do, it would have been that uh, King of the Ants movie, but I don't know necessarily where to find them in the wild, so to speak. But uh, uh, Walmart sometimes will have them. Okay. Well, so used to used to be able to go to Walmart and you would see uh, Asylum. Uh, then there was ITN and there was one uh, was it RLGE or whatever. Yeah, RLJE. Yeah. And I like them. They're pretty good. I mean, they got un oh, uncorked. Oh yeah. Which if I see an uncorked, if I go, hey, this movie looks good, I always will return to look at the back to see who does it. Mm -hmm. And if I see it says uncorked, oh, that's that shit. I'm putting that back. <laughs> ah, the the no. Jurassic case was fun. I, I that that's a the, one of the uh, uh, that's one uncorked movie that I, I would recommend. The Jurassic case was pretty good. Okay, it's like for believe... like for Easter. I was looking at some buddy movies. Oh, this looks kind of good. Hit play, uncorked. Close. <laughs> it's a good play. name, a good logo, at least, right? I mean. Yeah, it's yeah. just I've seen I've seen some of the movies and I don't like anything they put out. I think I still have one uncorked left, Space Wars or whatever. And it's just sitting on my shelf, collecting dust. Space Wars, huh? I I, I got it because I think was gonna I had a chance to interview one of the cast members at one time, and then something happened and never came to be. So now oh. it's just sitting back there collecting dust. <laughs> yeah, that's fair, man. I mean, there's a lot of movies that. Uh, People like and I, I don't, and there's a whole bunch of movies that I like and people say are shit. <laughs> Same here, man. Sometimes it's literally shit with me, you know. I mean, the <laughs> Goose on Milk series. And yeah, it's, you can you can say that that those films are shit, and you're totally right. It's exactly shit. I bet West Real. really liked. I bet really. I bet West. You must really have liked. Uh, Krako's bad for a day. Conko's Conko's bad for a day. <laughs> Whoa, oh, no, I haven't heard of um, that. It was, uh, it, was an, it, it was an it was it was it was my shit. Yeah, it's an you. infamous um, <laughs> it's an infamous N64 game, okay. and it's M. It's not meant for a younger audience. So, like one of the early missions, you gotta get this cow to shit or something for some reason, and you gotta fight the the, the poo monster. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the gold then, uh, you have to help yep. this uh this uh flower with big tits get pollinated by the bee. Oh, <laughs> so a lot you of don't, symbolism you don't, there. Yeah, you don't see it, but if I remember, you hear the sounds. Is it squishy? And isn't you supposed to somehow use it so you can bounce off of boobs or something? Yeah, yeah. That's pretty it's, cool. It's, it's Nintendo of all companies, and this game was on the N sixty four. So of course, all of us. This came out when I was like in high school, I think. Okay. We gotta get a. We're like, oh hey, again okay, goes my friend Zach. He's got an N sixty four. We need to find a fucking copy of Con Conquer's Bad Friday. Hell yeah, I bought that <laughs> shit day one. <laughs> <laughs> Trust me, well, I, still, I think I still have it somewhere. Wes, find <laughs> it. You can actually, they did port it, but I think they might have censored a few things about it. But okay. if you can find uh, a working N64, that's not too much. Okay. You know, not, they, they won't charge an arm and leg. Pick mm -hmm. it up and pick a copy of this game up. It will fucking have your life for your ass off. Oh, okay. Again, right. this is this, Challenge this, accepted. This, this, this is Nintendo, the company that put out like, you know, oh, Mario and all this you know, kind of family-friendly shit. Mm -hmm. And this is about as unfamily-friendly as you can get for a Nintendo. Other mm -hmm. companies, other consoles put out worse. Yeah, but this is the Tinder we're talking about. Yeah, <laughs> I was like, oh. do you guys remember Leisure Suit Larry? I think it was. I played the one where it was his nephew, whatever, at the uh movie at the movie studio. Um, fuck, what was that I, one? Is that the one that came out on PlayStation 2? There, the there was two, there was, yeah, there was two. There was one, well, like uh, come louder, whatever, where he uh. <laughs> was in college, and then there was one where this, um, oh, this his nephew's at the studio, and oh god, yeah. I, just, I was watching this thing about um, labels and logos that are done bad. Okay. So there's this one country they had this name was the Laka La Kuma Kuma whatever. Okay. The last the last three letters are the C U M, and when they decided to do uh -huh. the logo. 
they put a lowercase L, a heart, and then C U M. So look like, the, 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 yeah, them. they're like everybody else, you know, outside of that country is going to be laughing, but in the country, they're like, why are you laughing? <laughs> yeah. I heart come. <laughs> I know a couple no, of gals yeah. that might do with a good uh, shirt of that, you know, but yeah. uh, but no, yeah, they wouldn't wear it too. There was there was two um, Legion of Larrys, I believe they were released for PlayStation. Was it just PlayStation? Well, I don't know. The one, one I played was the, PlayStation Two. Because there was one where he's in college, and then again, there's the one in the movie studio, where I think it's like the the nephew or something. Yeah, yeah. Well, the the one that I play on PlayStation Two is is the the college one. So maybe it, I think it's it's one of those things that also got ported to Xbox. Mm. Okay. Actually, uh, because they got the dreaded A. Now you know about the video game rating system. I don't know what the system is in Mexico, but here in America, it's called the ESRB. And so M usually is like the highest. You you see some stories will sell that's for mature. A, of course, is adult. And some stores and consoles will stay away from them because I like. Mm -hmm. But I have seen they do. They just, Even though they're still rated A, you can sometimes find them on consoles now. They're probably because worse has come up since. Oh, yeah. Need we talk about um, GTA 4, The Lost of the Damned? Sure. There is a scene where you got to go talk to this politician as you're doing some work, and he's in the sweat lodge, and he stands up, butt naked. You go from a back shot, just his ass, and then the camera goes around. And they don't censor jack shit. Damn. So full wow. on frontal what? CGI nudity, and you're just like, oh, God, I did not need to see a CGI penis. <laughs> <laughs> so that's worse than what they were doing with Allegiant Soleil. But that was, that's a legendary game series. Yeah, GTA. I mean, no, Blue Suit Larry. Oh yeah, and well, that too. But yeah, yeah but... <laughs> I would always hear it in the passing. Like some people who knew about it, like they didn't want to talk about it. Like, oh, 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 we're gonna trouble if we talk about. It. Hey, this thing called. <laughs> so of course I'm going. What's this? Guys trying to get laid or some shit. <laughs> Go figure. So uncharacteristic of guys. And look at him. Look at the character's design. Balding head, short, out of shape. He just wants to get laid. And the oh, sad shit. thing is that he does get laid. <laughs> All so, it takes is a little determination, I guess, at the end of the day. So if, if we were well, short, I don't know. I was, I was very determined, and I, I was not successful. <laughs> well, you know, you gotta keep trying, man. So, but, but he's he's really short. He's like know. what? He's like what? Four feet tall. He's well. He... he when you look at him and compared to all these other characters, like the, he's just basically eye to eye with the stomachs, if I remember right. It's been a while oh, since no. I've played one, and I, I I need to see if they have any and just play the full time sakes. <laughs> but then again, where's the game? Well, no shit. The per this is a water gun fight scene with big booby anime chicks. You can guess why I bought this? <laughs> <laughs> the graphics. Yeah, it's got well, graphics. literally the graphics. <laughs> uh, like, did you did you did you ever play one of those stellar alive games with the uh, amazing jiggle physics? Oh, okay. Oh no. <laughs> not the, not the not the last one they made. What was the last one? Was that Dead or Alive six or five? Uh, I think they're up to six. Okay, then it would have been it would have been five. The previous one, I gave you guys a little cheat. In that game, if you lose ten fights with a woman, because those you have boob settings, so that's like um, left to right, natural, stationary. Mm -hmm. But if you lose ten. Oh, sorry, 10 fights with any woman, you get, oh my God. Which just looks the most painful looking thing ever. Even when they're standing still. <laughs> and these are double D and bigger. So if you think if someone actually had the boobs, like, they'd be like, oh, 
<laughs> right. And best note, damn right, it unlocked the oh my god movement. <laughs> oh. But that's the only reason why people probably play that game. Big, booby, bouncy boobs. Yeah. Nothing like them in the world. Yeah, that's definitely the reason why I, mean, I played that. Because I played Mortal Kombat for the violence, and I played Street Fighter because that, that's a genuinely good game, or King of Fighters. But the other life, nah, it's, a, it's about the boobs. Uh, I actually sure. think I have one of them. Oh, that's what I love about Wes's streams. It, it can start off talking about music, and then we, then we end right. up with <laughs> <laughs> I kind of I put it in the description that we would probably be going off topic yeah i think i think i did, think my i think cool. mine's i think People mine's digital understand. but then you got then you got this oh, oh yeah soul 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 you, you got I a character that. named um ivory and anybody who's played the game knows why she's got such a fan following oh yeah her and the ninja check oh boy yeah, some of the Soul Calibur girls are pretty booming. So oh, yeah. Cool. You know? That's also the game that got me accused of not liking fun. Oh, yeah? Because... Well, we um, know that ain't true, man. I mean... You see this guy right here? I bet you he would like that. that that's that's Garoff. Limonia. From, that's Garoff from uh, Witcher. Oh, and at the time, I wasn't much of a, a, a Witcher fan. So when I found out he was going to be in it, I had replied to a post on Facebook. Uh, I'm sorry, I don't really, you know, I'm not really feeling it. I'm not a big fan. So what happened? Someone replies to my comment. Well, you must not like fun. Jesus fucking Christ. All I said was I wasn't a fan of some guy. <laughs> I'll be right back. Okay. So, Professor, how are you doing over there, buddy? Oh, wait, hold on, watch. I'm going to do the same thing, guys. I'll be right back. Hello, hello. Hello. Oh, I'm back. Oh, keep, I apologize, but my internet keeps fucking off. Oh, it's cool, man. I will literally be right back. I don't know where. I think Echo had to feed the dog or something. Okay. Sure what's going on, man? Now that you're back, I don't want to have to leave you here. Totally alone. I'll be at least. No, alone. it's okay. If you got something to do, I'll, I'll understand. I can I can hang out here, talk about okay. boobs. Yeah. Uh, Bone says ghost face enters the room. Okay, what's Lamonia got here? Look at this. Oh, it's stabby stabby. It's a knife. Damn. Never say I'll be her. Be yeah. It it always works for me though. Echo ain't never come. Yeah, well, back. No, that's because th no one, no, no one's gonna mess with the ice lords. They know better. Yes, damn right. You ain't kidding. Well, oh yeah, I guess, I guess it isn't very true after all. I there's one in particular who is looking to take me, take me pee pee, and turn it into a trophy on her wall. <laughs> this really? is true. Yeah. And uh, I'm starting to think she might be for serious on this, man. Like, but I got to admit, it's it's nice to know that someone wants your cock. You know, I mean, <laughs> oh, Curly like, Burn. Like, I, I don't know if it's true I, I, or if it's one of those urban legends. But I remember a long time ago there was this story that uh, about this lady that was married to this guy that was well hung. And the guy died, and the lady cut off his pee pee part, and had it like uh, embalmed or something. So whenever she get she would get lonely, well, you know, she would remember her husband. In, oh, in... Well, wasn't <clears throat> didn't Sada Abe famously cut off her lover's cock after he died? Or well, uh, maybe that's what inspired the the story I heard. I don't know, man. I don't know. It, 
It's very possible. But are, were you dating Lorena Bobbitt? No, but you could say in a matter of speaking, I kind of was. I never dated uh, Curly, but for whatever reason, she wanted to snip me. Hello, sorry about that. Uh, sugar uh, hurt. Her, sugar hurt herself somehow. She uh, pulled some oh, of her no. hair out. She pulled some of her hair out and aggravated her skin. So I had to go. I've been putting stuff on it to keep it treated while she heals. No oh, idea how she I'm did. I'm sorry it. to hear that, man. My dog had the same thing. Uh, I think maybe something bit my dog, and you know, maybe a mosquito or a spider. And uh, I just kept seeing that she would keep scratching and scratching. I'm like, well, what's what's wrong with this dog? And it's... then uh, I, I started seeing blood. I was like, what the fuck's wrong with you? And yeah, she scratched so hard and she drew blood. So I had to take her to a vet. And it was a thing. Yeah, I just I, it, I just been keeping it clean because all vet clothes. So yeah, she does. She's not in pain or anything. It's not you know. The skin's more aggravated. Yeah, well, 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 other than the uh, than the cream that the doctors gave me, I started spraying uh, antiseptic water in spray bottle, and that really helped the, the healing process. I'm using what that, I use uh, when I get cut myself. I'm using that uh, neosporin. Oh, that's that's and good too. She doesn't cut. She she doesn't scream when she's in pain or anything when I touch it. So, but but when I went to clean it off, all the the fur that was still stuck to her. her Came yeah. off, so now you can really see it. <laughs> yeah, it's it's poor Wes. <laughs> Detachable penis. I mean, uh, just this. He's always oh, yeah. thought about it, and one of these days he's gonna go all psycho, and you know. No. Nah. Hey, I, I understand. I, 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 I mean, you know. I mean, I get it, man. She she wants my dick. Uh, no. No, what, what you're supposed to do is get, to, I'm going to get no, in what, trouble what, for saying what, that if Wes, it ever gets Wes, out. Wes, what she's supposed to do when she pulls out scissors are like going, you're supposed to go, I was not big enough, baby. <laughs> I've already done that. Like, oh, <laughs> Let me tell you, I've come up with absolutely every possible combination of, you know, retorts to, you know, someone showing a knife and it intending to be, you know, the, the weapon of my dick's destruction. You know, I had to, I had to come up with something, you know, eventually I had to start kind of liking it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, in one of the episodes I suggested Wes use uh, one of those jock straps and she was like, Oh, I'll just take my time. I'll, I'll eventually I'll get to it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. She's determined. If she wants your dick, she will chop it off. You know I mean? And again, oh, then, when you're, when, so when you're watching, away, it's but... it's been done so much when you're watching a movie, and there's like a scene involving the the genitalia area of a guy. You're like going, Wes. That's like when we showed that 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 scene for uh Steven in uh, Camp Blood. It was like, bones. <laughs> I I didn't even think about it. Also, your bones is like, Wes, see that. <laughs> <laughs> Lamoni has a good point here, though. Don't get your dick cut off. It doesn't sound like a good time. You're right. But hey, no, 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 look, look. They I agree. Can re they can reattach it. Just ask John Wayne Bobbitt. That's true. Dick's oh, And Did it still works because he went on to do some porn movies. I don't yeah. know. I remember a talk show where they where they interviewed uh uh I can't remember what talk show it was, but they, they interviewed this chick that was in the porn with him and was like, Did that shit still work? And she's like, nah, it looks kind of weird. <laughs> <laughs> Man, that's gotta be a boner killer from hell. Did it? He had a band. Was like weird. he had a band that's like removable a penis or penisless. Limb, and it's some kind of joke God. about his his whole thing. They made a comedy movie with um Julie Brown, not the downtown Julie Brown, but the other one. There was two Julie Browns, and okay. where she played Luana Bobbitt, and she cuts it off. And she puts it in the sock. And she puts it in her mouth. In her mouth, she goes, <gasps> "He always wanted me to do that." <laughs> it was taking some of the Damn. big news news stories at the time and making fun of them. Yeah. Okay. Well, but yet when you look at what really happened, fuck, go had it coming. When you yeah, that's what they say. He, he was a piece of he, 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 he would he would beat her. He would treat her like shit. He would assault her multiple occasions. That night, him and a friend showed up. He was pissed drunk when he assaulted her, and that was the night she decided, fuck it. 
That's it. Yeah. Let me point something else at. Fuck around and find out, dude. She was she was Lat she's Latina. Yeah, I mean, don't don't sexually assault someone at all, yeah. let alone because you will eventually come across a woman who will rip your dick off. What does that yeah. say? What does that say to? If and you, you got around, it coming. How, how does fuck that say around to... and find out. Yeah, yeah. Don't don't fuck around with that though, man. I mean, I didn't do anything to get my uh, castration, my weekly castration threats. Well, it, it, it could be worse. It could be worse, Wes. Yes. We're going to give you. We're going to remove your nipples. Yes, those are my prized possession. I. I got to admit. Oh God! I just heard one about this. Thing this that's impressive about. I, you, I was I'm, watching. Do you, uh, I'm sorry. Do, do you remember how that whole thing started, Wes? Well, I think it was. Uh, I don't recall exactly, but Rainbow Fright was doing a stream with three or four other people, and I put a question in the chat: "What's the worst dick ripping you've ever seen?" <laughs> And she saw that everyone else was laughing, but she looking out like, mm, 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 mm. and I told the psycho babble group about that. And they were kind of like, oh, we're going to have to, you know, get you for this, Wes. And that's probably, and I have a lot of movies with ripped dicks in them for some reason. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. He, but, he can't live it down now. He's, 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 he's jinxed. Yeah, I am. Rather lose the nips than the tip. You're right. I was but, watching this this video about these different like body issues. Like this, there's this uh, drug. It's uh, gives us an S. It's like steroids, but not steroids. You can put it in and cause certain areas to inflame. Well, up. Uh, hmm. Unfortunately, there's a mishap. So this one guy did it, and his arms instead of having his muscle go up here, uh -huh. down here. Oh. One guy looked like he was putting it in his chest. Because those were G cups. Oh, G. You had the big masses, and they kept putting. They, had the, they were so big, they had to put little stars over his nipples in the video because it was like boing. <laughs> they said the downside. The downside of this drug, it can fuck your nerves up. I bet it can kill them and cause all these health problems. It probably the stretching that just kind of pulls them apart or whatever and they're you know once damaged but, but it's, it's like they can get irreparable. the muscle with, with muscle they can get the muscles without working out and without steroids and all the issues yeah and there's really you don't want to cheat mother nature like that man just just lift some weights or something you know do some push-ups and sit-ups and shit you know i mean don't... I'll, I'll do i'll do steroids what's the worst i'm gonna do fuck your heart off and give you a snossage that's pretty terrible, man. Let me tell you. I still, so if, if anybody, if anybody's played GTA San Andreas, they know about one of the funniest lines in a video game. One of the NPCs when you're walking around uh -huh. will randomly scream out, "Steroids do what to your dick?" <laughs> Every fucking time when I would hear that, I'd, I'd be trying to focus on a mission. All of a sudden, steroids do what to your dick? Put it down. <sighs> <laughs> <laughs> oh man i mean they and, should and, certainly let you know before but take it take in mind that with that game i don't know it was, i think it was that game they had written all these lines and they were supposed to they they got rid of the lines because they had to cut cast real criminals or convicts and real gangsters to say all the lines the NPC lines oh. some fucker <laughs> one of these guys decided that'd be a great line still <laughs> with you what do you dick <laughs> Well, look at it. it lives in it lives on in infamy now. It's it's actually a pretty good line now that I mean you remember so because it's like a word. <laughs> now see we're gonna see we're looking at you. It's here's here's the plan. We're gonna pierce Wes's nipples. We're gonna chain them together, and then we're gonna add another chain that's gonna go all the way down. We'll give him a fucking Prince Albert. Nope, we're gonna chain them to his <laughs> belly button. Where we're gonna have another piercing, and then even lower. And maybe we'll put one in his tate. You know, I I can't deal with the taint thing, man. I'm sorry, but I was thinking of getting the, like a row of studs, you know, put on my dick at one point in time. I'm just kidding. Well, that's, I don't that's think a bitch to walk through any metal detectors at the airport. 
Yeah, right. And then I put the wand up. You're like, you're like, ding, 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 ding. I just saw the chat dissipate and evaporate away after saying that. I'm sorry. Oh, God. Now I'm looking at the DVD uh, severance now. Oh. Okay, Deep Blood. That's that's a Joe Diamato. I think mm. I've seen one of his movies. Sure. Demons 3. Skin Deep. Skin Deep. Who does that? Fuck. I don't know, but I know that. Like a seven, seven. Cover. Got a Burial Grounds. The, the Blu ray for Burial Grounds was sold out. I already have it on Blu ray. Oh, you mean the Video Nasty Burial Ground? Yeah, best. The, have you seen that movie, The Scene with the Nipple? Or I thought it was Dead and Buried I was talking about there, but. Uh, it's, it's, it's a Night of Terror Burial Grounds. And oh, there's just, there's this I, scene that is good. where because they have this character who's supposed to be all fascinated and infatuated with his mother, basically wants to bow chicka wow wow her. They yeah. hired some guy that got dwarfism or whatever to play the kid. Yeah, Peter so he Park. He, yeah, he dies and comes back as a zombie, and he's all looking at it. She's like, "Okay, baby, you could have me." And she, you know, she pulls the top off, like feet on my nipples, and he's like, comes in, like he has this feet, and all of a sudden, he, ah! <laughs> pulls away, whips a nipple part of a breast off. It's like, that's, oh. why, that's why you don't continue to breastfeed after the wrong age, you know? I mean, come on. It's Let's a pretty cool look. movie. That scene alone makes it worth it. Yeah, it is a pretty cool movie. It's it's insane how this Peter Bark was trying to play a child. They just put but, a bad wig did on him, though. He a good job. <laughs> yeah, he uh, did. Except, except for that wig. Was that a wig? It looked like a wig. Yeah. <laughs> Nightmare just, Castle. Uh, oh, they got the, 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 the Video Nasties, the Definitive Guides, Volume 1 and 2. Yeah, I've got those. And they're great, man. They I do saw... A... Last week, I, I, I was coming down with a cold, so I, I was in bed the whole weekend. So I went down the rabbit hole of documentaries, and I saw one called uh, VHS Nasty on, on Tubi. Mm. It's like a documentary about the whole censorship thing and the the video nasty list. It was pretty good. That sounds cool. I uh, love they, watching stuff about that, man. Uh, they got love... one that called they got one called Night of the Demon. It looks like it takes place in a cabin. Yeah, it's a Sasquatch movie and it takes place in the woods. Is that the and one where Bigfoot rapes a chick? Cabin. I believe so. And she births his love child. And there is some thrusting, if you will. Man, that 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 chick got it bad. I mean, she was, got beat up by her her dad, and then yeah. she got raped, and then she got Bigfoot baby. Jeez, yeah, yeah. She's certainly going to heaven or something. I mean, she's gonna, you know, she's gonna get a good afterlife. I hope. Oh, Felucci for fake. Is that the documentary? Oh, F for fake. No, Felucci for fake. Oh, full okay. Felucci for fake. I don't know. I, oh, is that on Severn too? Yeah. Damn. One of the I ones that's. So I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm sitting there naming these movies up, and I'm gonna just hurt Wes's pocketbook. Oh um, no, no! It shocking dark. That, but um, shocking dark's pretty cool. The Devil's Honey. Oh boy, I did that on Thirty One Days of Horror, and I didn't realize it until it was too late. It's not a fucking horror movie. It's it's adult, isn't it? Kind of. This guy plays his saxophone right up against this lady's, uh, and she gets off on it. It's pretty. Oh, oh which end? <laughs> the 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 horn part of it, or whatever. The, the oh, the mouthpiece. Not the mouthpiece. <laughs> like the what do you call that? The the, the exit. The exit. There you go. <laughs> oh well, I mean, if Letterface dry humped uh, that one chick, I mean, why not with a saxophone? That's true. That's true. That was a pretty hot scene. You got to admit the uh, Leatherface and, and uh, Stretch, right? Yeah. Speaking of Bigfoot <laughs> movie, again, I'm spoiling the shit out of uh, my haul videos, but I finally found a copy of Legend of Boggy Creek. That's a pretty good oh, Bigfoot movie. Isn't that yeah. more than one of those movies? There is, and uh, I've got the part two on VSA, v Vincent. Now Professor's got to hunt for the other one. He's like, ah, oh, son of a bitch. 
the, there are a couple of them at least. Which one is that? Uh, Return to Boggy Creek. I see. Good. I might have to order a few of these movies. I've ordered from MVD before. I did the the Wild Eye sell. Let me locate this. Oh. And you notice no one does an asylum cell. Boggy Creek 2 and the legend continues. Oh, okay. Ooh. But again, no one does an asylum cell. <laughs> See, that's why that's why it's uh it's extra special when you come across a copy because you can't find them anywhere. <laughs> but I, I'm looking at Day of the Animal and yes. Revenge of the Living Dead Girls, which I think I've seen before. I'm, I might have to research that one to, to remember if I've seen it before. The Living Dead Girls are pretty well put together, I suppose, but I don't know. I couldn't tell you, man. Um, Do you remember Zombie Lake? You know, there's like like two different versions of it. I do. I got it on Kino Redemption. Uh, there's what? There's a censored one, and then the uncensored. Yeah. Basically, it just means the weird girls are wearing clothes. Oh, uh, if I remember right, that's all. It's the one about like, like Nazi zombies that rise up out of a yeah lake from, yeah. And it turns out the little girl is the daughter of one of the ones. Oh, uh -huh. God, at the end, when they're sending all the zombies, all the other zombies like, ah! And then you watch the one who plays the father. <laughs> like, God. he's like, I'm burning, I'm in pain. I'm happy. <laughs> <laughs> That's good acting there, man. Well, boys, should we call it a night? What do you think? We got to give one last shout out to Lane Staley, though, of course. Yeah. Oh, here we go. Favorite Alice in Chains song. There you go. Uh, we'll start with you, Professor. Oh, uh, I'm terrible with names. You guys go first. <laughs> okay. You can just hum it or something if you want, if you know the, the We're line. probably the figuring it out. So I'm, I have to go with Man in the Box. Nah, I'll, 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 I'll succeed until I... Let, let me look at my, <laughs> my CDs it, it, and it see if I can remember. If it's me, it would either be Man in the Box or The Rooster. You know, those are good songs too. I uh I personally like Wait, is is Man in the Box the one that goes like Aah. Yep, yep, yep. That's the one. Okay then that's my pick. I, I used oh, to uh, sing uh do you guys ever play rock band? No I don't, but I hear it's oh, it was a really cool video game where you, you could play with drums and uh guitar and uh, I would Somehow, uh, people, uh, no one wanted to be the singer because everyone, you know, didn't sing that well. But I was like, "Fuck it, I'll I'll be the singer." And that <laughs> I like singing that one. Yeah, that's a good one, man. And yeah, uh, she, uh, Lamonia, she picked a good one. Down yeah, the that's a great choice, Lamonia. I love that one too. My favorite is, and you're probably gonna be like, "What?" But uh, it's Head Creeps off of the self-titled or Tripod album. It's fun. I like the chorus, you know. Time to call the doggies off. Tired of the shadow wind. It's a good song. Just trust me. <laughs> oh, yeah, it is. We will. I liked it, at least. I Read never. Letter. That's the one Nothing. thing. I, I I have a uh, Amazon Music. I have a subscription, and I'm, I'm always trying to look up for songs, and I can't remember the goddamn names. I'm like, <laughs> shit, what's the name of that song? Yeah. It happens like that, though, man. It just does, you know. Otherwise, I I have the same problem. You know, I just remember a lyric and look it up by the lyric. Usually, it comes through. Yeah. But on yeah, YouTube, it just, at least. Yeah. I yeah, I just Google it like song that goes. <laughs> I'm the man. In the box. Because uh, I used to have this app that you would, uh, you know, if you heard a song, you would play to your cell phone and it would tell you the name of the song. But that shit started stopped working years ago. Oh, wow. And that's probably the best way to find them, you know, just be able to hum the tune and someone pick it up and say, hey, that's this. 
Yeah, they will. Especially, especially <laughs> like that, someone like Allison Chains. They're going to be like, oh, hey, yeah. Like that, <laughs> that Married with Children episode when Al's trying to find a song and he's like, go with him. <laughs> no one knows what the hell that song is. <laughs> I I don't rem- I remember the the show, but I don't know the song he was going for. I don't remember what the song it was. He eventually found it, and then uh, uh Joey. Uh, ba- it was back when Joey was uh, from Friends was part of Married with Children for a while. Oh, okay. and he just smashed the the uh, the the desk. <laughs> oh yeah, wasn't he Kelly's boyfriend or something? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, okay. I remember when Anthrax played on Married with Children. That was Anthrax! Something. Yeah, boy. I'm the man. Yeah. <laughs> Taught it a mash. Do you know what um, song they played on Married with Children? Which one? It was In My World. Ooh. They, they still had Belladonna before his first departure. Or his departure, I guess. Good, good song. I like it. I love Married with Children. I I, I have the uh, I don't know who released it. It's one of those low budget uh, releases. It has the complete series. Uh, okay. Instead of coming uh, in in like individual cases, they come with those uh, in those little sleeves, the black sleeves where they put the discs on. Okay. Okay. Im- image quality is about TV quality, but fuck it, I don't care. <laughs> I love that show. Yeah, it's all you need. TV quality will do. Yeah, it's a great show, man. I mean, we used to gather around every Sunday night. I think it was on and watch the hell out of that show. Yeah, but as I grow older, I identify with Al Bundy uh, more than I would care to admit. Yeah, <laughs> I understand that, dude. Uh, I that just comes with age, I think. Yeah, no, it, it must. <laughs> yeah, I, I can't say the professor's getting old because that would backfire on me. <laughs> Technically, I think you're older than I am for a couple of days. No, I think I'm born at for, I saw I'm born at the beginning of the month. You're born at the end. Yeah, so you're you're a few days older than I am. So yeah, I can't go. Hey, professor's getting old because it'd be like, oh fuck, so are you. <laughs> <laughs> you won't. Man, be I, I'm dreading the day that uh, Halloween 1978 celebrates its 50th anniversary because I'm be like, oh shit. I'm 50. So basically, the <laughs> bottom the bottom line is, Professor's safe from any old jokes from me. Yeah, that's fair. He has immunity because <laughs> <laughs> he has, he has the card. He can just play back and throw it right back in my face and be like, "Guess what?" <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Well, I'm gonna go because I'm gonna go look around at the cell with Severin. I might pick up a, a two or three. Cool. There's a few that I'm, I'm eyeing. Yeah, I'm gonna check that out myself. And by the way, good night to everyone that's left in the chat. Lamonia, you're wonderful. Everyone that came, Mr. Dan, Bones, you know, everybody. Haas, we love y'all. Thanks for coming we by. Do. And yep. We do. And, and, and we'll uh, I want to thank you for having me on, Wes. It's always a pleasure to hang out with you and Echo and, and everyone else that's it, in the it's, panel. It's just always My a pleasure, pleasure to hang out. It's- Always a hangout, always a pleasure to hang out with the Ice Lord. But maybe someday he'll let us go to the Ninth Circle Strip Club. Just say, oh, nice. he, 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 he doesn't seem to want to take us there. So I mean, he's, he's no, it's not like that. But he, he, there's girls there with six boobs, night, all of them are G cups, and he's he's he's, he's arguing to himself. So, <laughs> <laughs> well, wouldn't you if you had the choice, right? I don't know. Good night, good night to everyone, and good night, Lamonia. Thank you for sticking it out, and thank you <laughs> both for coming around. Hey, no, thanks for having us, Wes. Always a pleasure. Always a pleasure to see you, Professor. Good night, everyone, and God bless. <laughs> <laughs>